Spirit of the living God, you are the power of the highest. We respect you. We honor you. We decree and declare that you have unrestrained access to our hearts, to our minds, to our bodies, to our situations, and our destinies tonight. Lord, we declare that this service tonight will bring dramatic shifts to our lives. We have come to feast. This is Bethel, the place of bread. We have come to access light, to access illumination. We pray, O oh God, that by the power of your spirit, you will transform our lives. We truly humble ourselves before you. We confess that we do not know much. And for many of us, we confess we do not even know anything at all. But we are glad that we are before you, the wisdom of God. Teach, O oh God, that we may learn that we may understand and that our fruits abide tonight oh god again and again and again and again our hearts are opened and we vow to give you the glory in jesus name god bless you please be seated good evening everybody acts chapter 20 and verse 32 i really want to encourage you to pay attention to all the teachings every koinonia service for you should be a moment of lifting a moment of rising we have covenanted with god to not waste the time of anyone at all whoever finds his way to this place this is not a museum this is not a a film a cinema center this is a place for encounter so when you come you must have that expectation that god will truly change you doesn't matter which of the services it's my personal commitment to god and to you to make sure that every single service becomes worthwhile many people you know you really have to understand the sacrifices that people go through and then you will know that it is only godly to ensure that people really encounter god for real are we together Acts chapter 20. I will continue to draw this scripture and um, let's start with this tonight. What I have to teach tonight is very powerful. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Can you read? If you can see it, please read. One to read. And now, brethren, uh huh, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified you can be among those who are sanctified but not built and without any evidence of your inheritance the bible says that a man can be commended first to god and then to the word in this case he calls it the word of his grace the word of his grace being the word that is able to provide and make manifest in your life all the multifaceted possibilities that are resident in the Christ. The Bible says the word of his grace can achieve two things in your life. The word of his grace that is able to, number one, build you up. Everybody say build you up. And then number two, to deliver to you. Notice how the word of God, I really want you to understand this scripture. Notice how the word of God works. It does not start by giving you an inheritance. It starts by working on you. So that when you sustain that capacity, then there is nothing God is unable to give you. Many times we desire things physically and spiritually that we do not have the spiritual, psychological and physical stamina to receive. Are we together now? Yes. This, this podium is resting on a casted ground. It has the ability to take the weight of this, so there's no trouble. Your seat was designed with your weight in mind. Are we together now? So your sitting on that seat is not a threat at all. It is able to take you. But you cannot carry this speaker, for instance, and drop it on certain seats it will break so the bible says 
that the word of God scans your life and looks at the magnitude of spiritual inheritance to be given to you and then it starts by building you until you rise to that level in the spirit where no weight of spiritual substance on you can break you then it delivers to you are we together now so this is already a word of encouragement so that if nothing is being delivered to you as it were you are not discouraged because you know that it means capacity is being built are we together many times services like this are not just times of receiving things it may be times of building it is not always that something is just given like you receive something a substance many of us just want something we can receive and run with if it is god he gives gifts according to his riches there is nothing god gives a man that is small and so when god delays in giving you it is because he's allowing your capacity to be able to retain are we together yes very powerful it is not enough to receive you must sustain an ability to retain because you can lose something that God gives you the Bible is full of things that were once given to men and taken back so God is able to take advantage of his word to build me and build you and then when we gain that statue in the spirit then deliver to us an inheritance among them that are sanctified let your word come and bless us oh god in the name of jesus let me encourage you again i say this to you from the depth of my heart and i say this to you in all truthfulness and i say this to you with all audacity if you listen to the truths that i teach you you will never fail it's true leave your situation and the pride around it don't mind it focus on the truth you are listening to and see how forcible right words are the bible says how forcible there is a force that right words when you receive it can exert on your situation until it bends and glorifies the lord so tonight please take your eyes away from what you are trusting god to do or what has not been done just focus on the word the worst spirit in my opinion demonic spirit now is not death death is just the last enemy not the worst the worst spirit is not the spirit of infirmity that causes sicknesses now the worst spirit listen carefully is not even demonic attack dreaming of somebody chasing you up and down the worst spirit is the spirit that can cause blindness in your understanding the bible says it is able to make even the word of god unfruitful that the god of this world has an assignment to create a system of blindness over the minds of the people so that they are not open to the glorious gospel it is the worst state a man can be in not sickness not failure not poverty none of these things in themselves destroy it is our attitude around them that empowers them to destroy us but blindness whether you do something about it or not it will destroy you blindness every time jesus saw blind people he was very he was intentional about their healing blind people are mad people these two categories anything that affects your eyes and your mind is truly demonic are we together there are people doing exploits in the world today without hands there are people doing exploits today without the ability to speak there are people who do not have limbs and are doing all sorts of things but you will seldom find a madman do anything that is impactful there are people who can even you know just rise above the limitations of blindness but you look at their lives and you know that it is not easy when god opens your eyes and opens your mind is a true miracle are we together now 
I was sharing, I can't remember where now. Um, I think it was one of the departments. I do not know that I was having a meeting with them. And then I was sharing with them how that a man is not truly delivered until he receives grace that gives him passion for the word. Any man that rejects the word is oppressed. Even if he does not see any spirit in his life. You don't have to have a dream of a demon chasing you. The moment there is a resentment for the wisdom of the word, it is it a sign that your life is acutely under an attack. Are we together? Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so as the word of God comes, please, I, I challenge you to open up your heart. See it as the word of his grace that is coming to you regardless of what the limitations are pay attention to the word they looked unto him and they were not ashamed their faces were lightened looking at your situation will not change anything but if you look to the word the word has a force that the anointing follows the word not a man the anointing looks like it is following a man because that man is following the word are we together now the anointing does not follow men. The anointing follows the word. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Be fruitful. Write it down. That's our topic for tonight. Be fruitful. If I were you, I would say amen. amen. Hmm. Open our eyes in the name of Jesus. Let the word of God change us. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. We're reading to 28. The Lord declared this year by His Spirit, that is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. And my assignment is to guide us by the Spirit on the principles allocated um, for our fruitfulness, our productivity, and our efficiency in the kingdom. And tonight, we're dealing with something very, very important. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. And Elohim said, Let us make man. So, man is the subject here after our in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air the cattle over the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth 27 so god created man in his own image in the image of god created him male and female created he them 28 and god blessed them and God blessed them. The Bible didn't say, and God discussed or he said to them. Please listen. And God blessed them and said unto them. Some other versions say, and God blessed them, saying. So he routed the blessing through words. But the blessing are not words. The vehicle for communicating them is just a word. He can choose to use any other mechanism. Remember, he's God. And God blessed them and said to them, first instruction, be fruitful and multiply, not or multiply, be fruitful. That means fruitfulness is not the same as multiplication. Are we together? When the Bible says something or something, it means either of the two holds the same value. But now he's saying be fruitful. Then in addition to fruitfulness, multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Then it says have dominion, etc., etc. So tonight we are picking one, be fruitful. And we want the Lord to open our eyes and to understand God's idea of fruitfulness. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10 for this cause we also paul is speaking since the day we heard of it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding verse 10 that ye might walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God being fruitful not in some in every good work hallelujah 
so we see from scripture that fruitfulness is a command fruitfulness is a command in fact jesus demonstrated in his own earth work how much he resented on fruitfulness once upon a time the bible tells us that jesus was on his way back and he saw a fig tree and that the tree had green leaves in other words it was attracting his attention but coming to the tree he discovered that there were no figs and jesus not a prophet that is still being renewed not an apostle in the making jesus himself looked at the tree and cursed the tree and said that no fruit will come out of you again and by the next day they came and discovered that it had withered right from the root so god is passionate about fruitfulness are we together please write this down to be fruitful means to increase to increase to be fruitful means to be productive fruitfulness entails increase fruitfulness entails productivity fruitfulness entails enlargement and expansion are we together fruitfulness entails evidence evidence you are fruitful to the degree to which your life can produce evidence what evidence evidence of the faithfulness of god evidence of the investment of god upon your life evidence of the supremacy of the word in your life why do we need to be fruitful it's important we know let me just address that because we have a lot to deal with why do i need to be fruitful because you know there are christian circles today well-meaning that think subjects like this should not be the believers should not be bothered with the subject of fruitfulness why because most times when we talk of fruitfulness all they think about is money and physical things they just look at fruitfulness um, in terms of affluence physical and material blessings and then they convince themselves that anyone can live without them and then they assume that all those things are distracting but the bible says we need to be fruitful in every good work every good work every good work are we together why do we need to be fruitful john chapter 15 and verse 8 we'll still make reference to that scripture but please go with me very quickly to john 15. i pray that god opens your eyes to understand this once and for all mm. verse 8 herein is my father glorified when you bear much fruit how is the father glorified when you bear much fruit when you bear much fruit when a man pays the school fees of his son and the son returns back with a report card and says daddy out of 90 students i took number one and my average is 91 i am doing well that child is fruitful that child justifies the investment of the school fees are we together but on the flip side if the child returns back with a report card and is written there need to see the parent and zero from top to bottom is that child fruitful no the the father is angry for many reasons one he's angry because he's the father are we together just being the father alone is enough to upset him the owner of this child that is carrying this shape are we together two because his resources a symbol of his energy was committed into that boy's life so the bible says the father is glorified when we justify his giving us the holy spirit when we justify his giving us his wisdom his favor remember our scripture here that has become an anthem when god makes all grace to abound towards you he expects fruitfulness in other words he in his mind he does not see that there should be an excuse in your life because all grace has been well coordinated towards you if you're with me say amen, amen. the father is glorified when the saints bear fruit all kinds of fruits 
Number two, bearing fruit also inspire and encourage you. Most people do not know that when they bear fruit, their, their own spiritual lives also continue to grow. Spiritual barrenness is very dangerous. And barrenness in every regard is dangerous. Biologically speaking, when people experience any kind of barrenness, it's not something that is received with gladness. It's something that challenges them, can even destroy their marriage. So we know for sure that any form of barrenness calls for action. Are we together now? Yes. Hearing is my father glorified. But then God gives you consolations that my life is producing fruits. Producing fruits. Producing fruits. The third reason why we need to bear fruits is because our fruitfulness is a message to the world that God is true. Our fruitfulness is a witness that can cause men to believe in God. Very important. John chapter 1, please. And verse 6. John chapter 1. John chapter 1 and verse 6. Our fruitfulness. There was a man sent from God. The Bible says whose name was John. 7. The Bible says he, the same came for a witness. What was his assignment? To bear witness of the light that through his witness all men might believe. So when you are fruitful through your witness, men might believe. God is depending on men to believe in him, but their faith is routed through your results. Are we together now? That means that there is a dimension of my result and your result that has the capability, has the ability to make men believe God. If it is true that we are passionate about seeing his glory revealed, then we must truly desire to be fruitful to the end that men look at our lives. The last verse, Galatians 1, yes, 24. And they glorified God in me. Galatians 1, 24. And they glorified God, not just through me, in me. And they glorified God, not they glorified me. And they glorified God in me. Are we together? Gentiles need to see the light, the results, the evidences of God's hand upon our lives. Let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters. Results are a language. It is true. When you bear fruit, even fruit that abides, it is a language that speaks to creation about the faithfulness of God. It is a language that attracts creation to the one true God, the source of all lifting. So God is passionate about our bearing fruit. Mighty God. Settle it once and for all that God is glorified in my fruitfulness. Settle it once and for all that God is glorified in my fruitfulness. When I am fruitful, when I am productive, when my life begins to produce evidences that God is glorified. Let me tell you something about fruitfulness. You can say the same thing without fruit and say the same thing with fruit and the impact will be east and west. Fruitfulness makes your words heavy. When you have results, your words are worth believing. The words of a fruitful man are seldom contended with when people speak from a standpoint of results there is a compelling conviction that it brings to you and so if we want creation to subscribe to this life that we so propose day and night telling them jesus is the way the truth and the life telling them that he is the one who can lift men god is counting on our lives to be able to produce that message and in the name of Jesus, he will, find, he will find a real witness in you. Be fruitful is a command. In the loins of prophecy, when God was looking at Adam and prophesying, he saw Joshua Selman, he saw Koinonia, and he said, be fruitful. In other words, I forbid barrenness. I forbid barrenness. I forbid barrenness in your life. Be fruitful.
But like every other mystery in the kingdom, there are, there are, we are mandated to understand the spiritual systems, like I've always taught you, uh, that our results depend upon. I've taught you again that between your desire and the manifestation, there are spiritual systems that connect them. Are we together? I've told you the prophetic speakings of God, that when God speaks, he does not speak as though he's talking to a man. He speaks as if he's talking to himself. And so some factors will not be captured in his speakings. It will take the spirit of revelation to break what God has said down so that you now see how you connect to that word. God can look at you and say, where is the house? And you are sitting down wondering and say, God, who are you talking to? And then he says, I'm talking to myself. You see that? It is the spirit of revelation that will break that down so that you begin to understand that God does not speak like men. Knowing how God speaks is very powerful and it is a spirit of revelation that can help you and help you understand the communications of God. Are you with me tonight? Yes. So there are mysteries, secrets, principles you can call them allocated for fruitfulness. Wishing fruitfulness is a waste of time. Just having a strong desire for fruitfulness is a waste of time. It may be beneficial for a while because at least it can draw you to the secret place where you create the atmosphere for the spirit of revelation. According to Proverbs 18 and verse 1, it says, Desire through desire, a man having separated himself, it says he seeketh and intermediate with all wisdom. But that in itself does not make you fruitful. There is a lot of superstition in the body of Christ. Ask the average Christian, do you believe in results, fruitfulness, productivity? He or she will say yes. And then you ask them, how is it going to happen? Then you will hear the variety of ignorance expressed through many well-meaning words. But the bottom line is, I don't know. Some will say Jesus will do it. And it looks very right just because the name of Jesus is in part of that that erroneous statement jesus would do it others would say i will work hard i will do my best we are called to walk circumspectly everybody says circumspectly i told you that in a man's dealings with god creativity is almost not needed it is obedience it is when it has to do with dominion and kingdom legislature that is where your creativity comes the principles that make for your greatness are not left for your guessing they are there listen please when you get this you will stop wasting your time trying to crack your brain to know god trying to crack your brain to get truth no truth is not an idea it's not just the function of the mind you don't reason truth it is revealed there is a body of knowledge allocated for your results are you getting what i'm saying now yes if i have this bottle of water it's already there my assignment is to find it not to try to look for a way of 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 refining water and all of that and and and, and purifying it no it's already there this is how truth is don't think that truth is like many ideas that you crack your brain to just download no it is given and received otherwise it is not there if it is truth then it is not subject to the ideas of men it's something that comes from god if you get this you will be restful your assignment is to create the atmosphere for that truth to come lord what are the keys towards my fruitfulness and you remain there waiting like a waiter and the spirit of revelation comes and when it comes upon you the secret is revealed he says then the secret was revealed unto daniel listen every truth in the kingdom is revealed 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 every truth in the kingdom is revealed if it is truth then it was revealed whether the custodian of that truth admits that it was revealed or not the bottom line is that it was revealed so all of the spiritual activities that you go through for truth to come 
is only preparing the atmosphere for truth to come if the spirit of revelation does not bring you truth my brother and my sister you will end up conjuring sophia human wisdom ideas that cannot stand the test of time you can think ideas you can read books here and there and connect things but truth is revealed are we together And the Lord showed me something very powerful. And that's what I want to share with us. The mystery of fruitfulness is enshrined in a very silent parable that I want us to deal with right now. Hmm. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Luke chapter 8. Mighty God, open our eyes and help us see. Wherever we stop tonight, we'll pray. Luke chapter 8. We're reading the first 15 verses. Look at this. We call it the parable of the sower. It's not the parable of the sower. It's a kingdom mystery hidden in a story and kept only to be revealed by the spirit of revelation. Just because you read this does not mean you will have an understanding. Now, you can give a theological explanation as to what you think was happening. You can even write a book about it. But my brothers and my sisters, this is sealed. Until it is open, you will never see what is there. Are we ready now? So let's read. It came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village, Jesus now, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. Verse 2. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary, all of that, together they went with him. Verse 3. Um, okay, so, you know, the Bible is just giving us the setting now of all of this. I think it starts from verse 4. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake, but he spake by a parable. He communicated, but he used a parable to hide the secret. What is the parable? Verse 5. A sower. A sower went out to sow his seed follow the story a sower no name he went out to sow his seed so whoever this sower is we know that the sower was desiring fruitfulness are we together nobody just goes to sow seeds just because he feels like throwing seeds so one the sower had seeds number two the sower was a sower are you getting what i'm saying now listen a sower went out to sow his seed and as he sowed it's amazing that everything that happened by the wayside and the rest was called sowing it was not a mistake hmm. as he sowed some fell by the wayside listen and it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it two some fell on a rock and as soon as it was sprung up it withered away because it lacked moisture and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it and other fell on good ground so we know that they didn't just fall that falling is sowing because even on the good ground it uses the same word so it's not like the seed maybe a bag with holes and then it fell until he got to the good ground no he sowed there is a soil called the wayside and he sowed there and he watched what happened now the first thing we have to be thankful for is that god did not hide the failures of this sower otherwise we would have been deceived about fruitfulness the bible gives us the complete story of the struggles of this sower to the end that we may have a balanced understanding are we still together let's continue our story the bible says an order fell on good ground and it sprang up and bear fruit an hundredfold and when he had said these things he cried jesus started crying imagine that as i'm teaching you now i just finished then i, I pause and i start crying when the Bible says he cried, in many regards, he really cried. It's not just that he lifted his voice loud. He really cried. Why did he cry? 
he that had ears to hear let him hear how can you finish talking to people my brothers and my sisters this is jesus adult jesus not the child learning something in the temple and you stand and teach people and then start crying do you know why because we're saying wow jesus are you this smart and jesus said oh dear jesus was revealing through this story what was happening as he was teaching it was not just something that happened one day alone he was crying because there was a repetition of that story real time as he was talking he being the sower are you getting what i'm saying now yes let's go back to verse 5 now there are certain informations that we really really need to believe and understand about this to help our fruitfulness I, I just thought to explain this parable notice that Jesus was so passionate about this parable he didn't allow any human being interrupt the interpretation he said I will interpret it myself there are many times he would not interpret certain parables he would just leave them but this one he says so that there is no confusion I will explain and in many times Jesus will leave some details out in explaining a parable but this one every single detail was explained to tell you his level of passion let's go to verse 9 let's finish and then we'll come back to verse 5 go to verse 9 and his disciples asked him saying what might this parable be are we ready now let's hear Jesus interpret his own parable and he said unto you hallelujah it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God this is how he started interpretation Jesus interpreting now and I said leave that matter the reason why I will interpret this to you is because that thing you see is a coded message but unto you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God but to others in parables that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand every time the Bible use hearing twice the second hearing is understanding are we together now next verse now the parable is this I love Jesus now the parable is this number one the sower the seed is the Word of God mm. the seed is what not a business idea we are talking fruitfulness here the seed is not an investment plan listen carefully the seed that produces that harvest is the Word of God number two those by the wayside are they so those soils are people listen carefully people who have hearts the wayside are people the rocks all of that they they are different states of people's hearts notice the goal is to produce result but everything is happening inside a man's heart it just uses a farm to explain the entire labor of that fruitfulness is happening within the man, not outside the man. Are we together tonight? It says, those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts. Are we together now? Out of their hearts, not out of their life. He did not touch anything external. He just came into their hearts, removed the seed of the word of God, and left every other idea there. He didn't tamper with their ideas. They didn't tamper with all their plans. He just carried the word factor and left every other thing. And the Bible says, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they, which when they hear, they receive the word. So they are an improvement to the first set. The set, the first set just heard, but the second set heard and received the word with joy. Remember what the Bible says about joy. It says they fulfill the spiritual law here with joy. And then the Bible says, and these have no root. Which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. Next verse. And that which fell among tongues are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked. The first set heard 
the second set heard received added joy the third set had and took action are you seeing now all an improvement to themselves and were choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection that means they started bearing fruit but the fruit could not mature the last set 15 but that on the good ground are they look look at look at this look at this they are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word keep it and bring forth more fruit with patience they are not creative people what made them good was honesty that they had an honest and a good heart and by that honesty they were given an ability to keep it and the bible says they produce fruit four soils jesus is teaching on fruitfulness now let me tell you this kingdom mysteries are very foolish and childish they were designed that way so that you have to be like a child to understand their operations and that is the reason why many people never become fruitful and never get results because of the simplicity and the childlike character of spiritual communication are we together now look at this i am very grateful to god that the sower himself was not mentioned the bible never told us who the sower was so the sower could be anybody the bible tells us what the seed was and the soils the reaction how they were planted and the results are you getting what i'm saying now now watch this very carefully do you know that we need to congratulate this sower first for his patience and endurance because whoever this sower was it is true that he had to survive a lot when you plant a seed and then it dies then you go to another soil and it improves a little then you go to another soil and it improves a little the bible is very careful to let us see the transitions of this man and saying that all of it is part of an equation that can be captured in, on your journey to fruitfulness the same sower continued to do this until he got to a point what was the difference my brothers and sisters between the wayside and a hundredfold returns the wayside once upon a time now a benefactor of a hundredfold returns every soil was a description of a level of development and the corresponding challenges that would stop that man listen the first we see in the life of that person the wayside according to Jesus's own interpretation was a revelation of extreme carelessness you can know that whoever was the possessor of that heart condition was a careless person are we together now there was no discipline at all for the devil to you only enter a man's house and freely pick something without him unnoticed if the doors are not closed there is no system of guidance he did not place value on the information and there are people like that all over the world the moment the word of God comes to bless them they, they, they are sympathetic to what the preacher is saying and they hope they are understanding but quite honestly they do not mind whether the information is lost or not it has not become precious and valuable they have not seen the usability of that information and so the press to guard and to protect is not there are we together? You only protect what you have value for. If you do not have value for it, you may not protect it. When you finish eating your biscuit in a in a, um, the the uh, what they call it now, the the sachet or so, you throw that thing inside a dustbin. Why? Because it doesn't mean anything for you again. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, forget about true success and fruitfulness. If the word of God and the truths delivered do not mean a lot for you. You have to get to a point where you have a desperation, a hunger and a thirst for truth. Remember that we prosper according to the third epistle of John, according 
to the prosperity of our souls and the bible says that the end of your faith is the salvation of your soul the renewal the transformation of your mind are we together let me digress a, 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 a little bit and let's go back to our ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly so god's ability here is not in doubt the bible says he is able to do to be able means to be capable to be able means it is within your power and it is within your jurisdiction the bible says he is able to do abundantly above all that we ask or think let's hold it there ask or think i've explained it here when you say ask or think that means your asking and your thinking carries equal value in the spirit that both your asking and your thinking are both prayer requests that rise to god your asking can be saying god bless me and your thinking say god i just changed my mind don't waste your time again and that both of them are prayers that can rise to god the bible says god is able to do what we ask or do what we think the thought realm was where the entire story in the parable of the sower was it it was an interaction in the soils of their hearts and their minds notice that when in the interpretation of those things very little was talked about their hands and any physical energy it was an activity of their minds that determined their failure or their success and even the extent of the success the deliverance that comes through transformation is a much needed deliverance in Africa, is a much needed deliverance around the middle belt, around the north. We need a radical shift in our perceptions and in our understanding. Otherwise, we will continue to mock and flatter ourselves and never give room for the fullness of the glory and the power of God to manifest. As someone what do you think is the key to lifting and rising the next thing they begin to tell you all kinds of stories they tell you get a good job they tell you do a good business others will tell you find a good relationship you know somebody who is a destiny helper etc etc those things only matter when these foundational things are in place listen my brothers and my sisters the beginning of your success is when the word of god arrives in your heart and in your mind not when you get a job the starting point of all fruitfulness is the arrival of the word that lives and abides forever your heart and your mind write it down please your heart and your mind a major part of your fruitfulness happens there the manifestation the manifestation is something that can happen suddenly Man of God, listen to me. Businessman, listen to me. Career person, listen to me. The external factor plays a very, very, very small role in your overall success. You are a reflection of the prevailing power of the world within you. You are a reflection of the, the maturity of the word of God in your heart and in your mind your heart and in your mind that means that the word of god alters your perceptions the principles of the word of god have gained entrance into your mind i'm more concerned about the mind part because that is where the stronghold of demons the stronghold of territorial limitations dwell many times when the devil wants to keep people fruitless do you know what he does he makes sure that the word of God cannot get to their mind, but every other thing can get to their hands. Sometimes Satan destroys you by giving to you. He makes sure that your mind never receives anything. Your mind can receive, can be buried while your pocket is full. And you will, anything that your mind has not received is not your own. If they pay you a salary that only got to your hand, you didn't receive a salary. And very soon you will know. 
no matter what it is please hear me my brothers and my sisters if it has not been captured in your spirit and your mind it's not yet your own we possess things in our hearts and our minds first before our hands demonstrate that we have gotten it our generation is obsessed with having physical things because you see when you have physical things it can give a show of results are we together now and and it can suggest some form of progress but real progress is what happens in your spirit and in your mind say my spirit and my mind one more time say my spirit and my mind we're discussing fruitfulness now so that a brother and a sister aspiring to rise to be fruitful according to the word of god that you are not listen carefully that you are not allowed it is not given to you to really experience fruitfulness until that happens in your mind and your life and the bible says the first seed that must enter your life and enter your mind please hear me it is not an investment idea it is not a business idea listen it is not it is not it is not um uh, what do we call it products and services they only will make sense when the word notice that the bible never tells us that the farm did not have other things but when satan came he only searched for the word and carried it and left every other thing there the word of God is an incorruptible seed. Listen, please, my brothers and my sisters, get this. The word of God is an incorruptible seed. The mindset, it says, let this mind be in you. Philippians chapter 2. Let this mind be in you. And verse 5. Let this thinking, let this perception be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Let this mind permit this mind permit this mindset to be in you which was also in christ every blessed person every world changer whether in the kingdom and in the secular will tell you that your point of advantage is not what you have in your pocket your point of advantage is not a car your point of advantage is not the house the point of advantage is the quality of the information that your mind like a womb has received and is able to incubate show me a man whose spirit and mind has received from god i show you a man who there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to destroy his fruitfulness it is first in your spirit and your mind while that is happening you're still with your trouser that you use needle and thread to sew doesn't matter while that is happening you are still in your one room with leakages everywhere stay there while that is happening there are no members coming to the church there are still you your wife and three other members don't worry you don't get the anointing just by hands laying on you the hands are only like a tap the hand stops on your head but the real impartation goes into your spirit when you drink water your mouth allows the water to go in and it stops but the water does not stop in your mouth it gets into your system if you leave water just in your mouth it will not do much you need to swallow it when you swallow it go to bed every other thing starts automatically the moment it leaves your mouth leave the rest a system has already been designed you don't just say water now where are you okay you are here shift left no 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 don't worry when you swallow a drug you don't look at the drug and say drug please make no mistake it's my eye not my back there is a design your job is to get it within you and let it stay sometimes some drugs take longer than others to start working there are some drugs that can even cause you to be drowsy to go to sleep so that it can really work and then it will damage everything that it needs to destroy whilst working my brothers and my sisters listen to me the foundation of true success is not running around with proposals i have a proposal i, I need capital i need this i need that no 
the major work that anybody will do it's not even carrying certificates all around and say just give me a job yeah, and my life will change there's nothing wrong with those things those things are profitless when your mind is barren it will not make any difference it will only convince you sociologically that you are better than someone else but sooner or later you will see that your life does not recognize those activities as progress are we together now there are many pastors who think that ministry rises just because of connections and invitations if i can sing here or preach here or do this no no your real fruitfulness is within the richness of the word of god within you the quality of the wisdom your interaction with the wisdom of god everything that happens is only a revelation of what is going on within the parable of the sower the entire the entire story of that parable is about the hearts of men a sower and seed the word of god the living word joshua chapter 1 please give it to us and verse 8 joshua chapter 1 moses is let's let's even start from verse 5 give us verse 5 we'll read down to verse 8 there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life as i was with moses so i will be with you i will not fail thee nor forsake you he's doing something to his mind he didn't give me a new knife and say this i sharpened this knife it can cut through trees no he's doing something to his mind that i am empowering your mind that if you can believe this no man will sustain an ability to stand before you all the days of your life and then verse 6 it says be strong and of good courage for unto these people shall thou divide look at god speaking there are giants so and god is telling him how to share the land not how to fight the giants in god's mind victory was settled i've given you victory not by giving you anything physical i did something to your mind that's your victory mm. be strong in the lord and in the power of his might we win not just by physical fights when our spirits and our minds agree let every devil clear the way it's true Be strong and of good courage for unto these people thou shalt divide he didn't say you would die during war i thought joshua would say come oh god assure me these people have real knife will i die or i will leave already if god tells you you are going to share a land it will be stupid to be asking whether you will die god is saying look i've seen the end of it let me teach you how to share the land look look at victors look at fruitful people discussing sharing the land not fighting we are talking about Jericho and other nations here. You are standing before a fortified city and God is saying, this is the slice. This one will go to this. Are you getting it now? So you see somebody that does not have Gary and is saying, this one will go to charity. This one is going to go to my parents. I have five siblings and I will take care of them. And you enter and say, what is happening? And you say, I'm planning. I'm planning my victory. He said, you are planning your victory. Are you aware that your mother is in the hospital and we need just 20,000 to help her? You say, I'm already planning. I know that I will. Which I swear unto your fathers to give them. Seven. Only be thou strong. What is the requirement? Be strong. Not just be skillful. Don't get me wrong. These are factors, but I'm arranging them according to order of priority. Be strong and very courageous that thou mightest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from me to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper. This is God giving a man a recipe for success. And he's not saying anything about the war he's about to fight. He's not saying follow through the back door. And not The instruction for victory would come later. He's giving him a winning formula. Verse 8. 
this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous who will make your way it's not only God that makes a way he can empower you to make your way and if you are not ready to make your way prosperous it's a commitment it's a call to responsibility and thou shall have good success brothers and sisters life is systemic we are not the first to enter any realm we desire not at this level God has empowered people listen God has empowered people in business, in ministry, spiritual life, whatever area. God has, listen, God has allowed us to see the scars of people. He's, he's, the Bible is not just full of triumphs. It's also full of failure and scars. The Bible says that all scripture were written for our learning. That we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. So God allows the, 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 the record of many people's limitations so that you will learn. Be fruitful is a command. Be fruitful. Oh, thou sower, be fruitful. And you're saying, God, change my life. Change my life. And you're thinking in your mind, capital. Oh, God, capital. Just give me 500,000. And God, you can even go out of my life. And the devil is saying, I like this kind of prayer. I like anything that takes the word of God out of a man's life. He will leave the capital with you and take the word away. And you will watch with wonder how you will mess up your own life. If I talk to many of us now, I say, what are you trusting God for? In what area are you trusting God for results? I will be surprised how many of us are expecting external things to happen so that it can be proof that the word of God is working. No. When it has to do with fruitfulness, the major work is within. How many ministers will stay and build capacity with the word? There are ministers who do not have a Bible, but they already have suits in advance. and i believe in success we teach you all the dimensions of success but let me tell you just putting pictures and photos of nice things on your wall and mesmerizing without the word of god is scientology you are just joking and nothing will happen it is the word of god that empowers as many as believe him he gave them power to become jesus said follow me follow the word and i will make you make you the maker is the word because it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow that's why business people who reject god are in trouble ministry people who reject god are in trouble career people who reject god are in trouble it's amazing how many people leave church to go and honor an appointment because they've indoctrinated themselves to believe that god is a luggage vain is the strength of a man in this world that we live in it is the richness of the word of god the richness of your spiritual understanding that translates into your fruitfulness listen invest in understanding invest in understanding before you invest in clothes invest in understanding before you invest in hair invest in understanding before you invest in cars and houses and all of this to invest in understanding is not to buy books to invest in understanding is not to watch sermons to invest in understanding is to have the preparedness to pursue exact knowledge to buy a book is one thing to read it is another thing. To understand it is another thing. To apply it is another thing. The labor dimension of fruitfulness is done internally. Please listen to me. The dynamics of redemption happen in the grave. After the third day when everything had finished, the grave, Hades, the place of the dead, Jesus is done and he's ready to resurrect. Now he comes out in glory and we see the effulgence of his glory and he calls many sons into glory. Listen, if a major part of your life is visible for all to see, you are not successful. 
if a major part of your life is visible for all to see in this kingdom people are only allowed to see a minute part in fact it's even the manifestation most of the work is done within notice that your nourishment physically only a little part of it is seen they see the food and they see it entering your mouth every other thing the digestion etc etc be fruitful as as god has helped me to rise and grow i found myself i'm i'm becoming more and more emotional to my own surprise because i look at people and i can understand the heart and the burden of jesus that he says he looks at people as though sheep without a shepherd and i look i say oh i now see why africa is this way i now see why our lives are this way and do you know many of us believe that because we have sincerity life must answer to us sincerity is very important like we learned but it is not enough something about your understanding has empowered satan to destroy fruitfulness in your life something about your understanding please listen understanding is important when they employ you sam come it's looking sharp and smart look at this when when you employ sam you are not employing your body there are few employments where they border on size are we together now any size in many jobs can do what they are employing they are employing your understanding and the time with that understanding a job is time plus understanding in someone's assignment are you seeing that now yes so the factor is your understanding i've given this analogy come come stand here for me please look at this reason with me for one moment let's assume that this brother god forbid there eh? i always give this example let's call this guy an arm robber that is a thief are we together and let's call this one a pastor a man of god looking sharp and then you are angry at this guy and you are praying that police will apprehend him because he's a nuisance to society and you are praying that god will open doors for this man to go to the nations because you consider him to be a blessing now shoot both of them now it's, it's not good to talk about shooting and a pastor but just in my example shoot both of them and let them fall to the ground dead who really died the dead body is on the ground now are you going to call the dead body a pastor is the dead body a pastor no is the arm robber is the dead body an arm robber neither the dead body nor the past the pastor's body nor the arm robber's body are the arm robbers or the pastor the pastor has gone the arm robber too has gone their bodies are there so who is really the pastor talk to me who is really the pastor this body if Sam adds weight, will it scatter the anointing on his head? Will it make him to suddenly become mad because he's not reasoning well? Not necessary. In fact, not at all. Are we together now? If this arm robber suddenly adds weight, does it necessarily stop him from having the appetite to steal? This is the arm robber and this is the pastor. When Satan comes, he doesn't need the body. He goes to the mind. When the mind sits on the throne, then the body becomes a slave to the mind. The body becomes a helpless executor of the conclusions that have happened. The board meeting happens between the mind and the spirit. The body is not invited. The body only executes the decisions that have been agreed upon. Same thing with the pastor. When the Holy Ghost comes to you like he's coming to some of you now, he's not concerned about the body. He's concerned about your spirit. Then he's concerned about your mindset. Hand over to him your spirit and your mind so that he will plant in you the seed of understanding and watch how your body begins to reflect what has happened within you this my brothers and my sisters is how we are fruitful in this kingdom every other thing like creativity and all of these things only answer to this foundation say be fruitful be fruitful does not mean go and do business 
that comes later be fruitful does not mean go and look for capital be fruitful does not mean go and do all no no the heart preparation and your mind most believers have done well in the area of the heart the spirit but our minds are terribly unfruitful our minds continue to reject the spoken word of god concerning our lives and this is my assignment that if this year if we are to experience extraordinary fruitfulness then we have to trust god to begin to transit us listen carefully to transit us from different levels of understanding there is a requisite level of understanding that can receive what god wants to give you a man who is pastoring 5,000 members and a man who is pastoring 1,000 and a man who is pastoring 100 and a man who is pastoring 10. The difference is not their size. The difference is not their tribe. The difference is not even the God they gave their lives to. The difference can, may not even be the spiritual authorities they submit to. The difference is the construction of their understanding. That someone has allowed the Holy Spirit to construct his value system to be so flawless that he knows how to engage the principles of the kingdom and the physical results show. While he's activating these things, every member that comes to him is in his house. But something from within you calls them. And it's not just anointing. The health of your mind is a force too. It can call. The same way it can drive. Please listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. If you intend to be fruitful, except it's just a cliche. You know, and, and, and many times in Africa, I think this is the reason why we like signs and wonders. Not because they are such a big deal alone. We like it because we believe it is a cheaper route to results. Just prophesy. Apostle, why waste your time to teach this? Didn't God anoint you for me? I mean, just get bottles of oil here, touch my head, and just like that other person testified. That you bear fruits that abide. Well, while I was sitting down here, we just had a brief, maybe 10 seconds discussion with Ejimi, and he said, he shared a scripture that just blessed me. And he said, the Bible says, strong men retain wealth. Powerful. You are not strong just because you have it. The ability to retain it means you have conquered the forces that try to take it from you. Are we together? When you lift um, this weight, you don't just pick it up and drop it down and win. You must hold it for some time. It's proof that it's, it didn't just happen. You hold it there while you are shaking. And then at a point, they say, you have, the point has been proven that this one, you qualify to lift that weight. So there are things that when you hold, if you are not spiritual and you did not hold it indeed, it will slip away. But holding it for a while qualifies that you held it through knowledge. We don't hold things with our hands. Our hands only support what our mind has held. The real instrument for holding things is your mind. When it's too heavy for your mind, your hand can support. But you don't hold things with your hand. Is God speaking to us? You are seated here right now looking at me, swimming through a maze of challenges maybe, and believing that you came for koinonia so that you will experience transformation. Could be in ministry, could be in business, could be in whatever it is. But then the Lord is saying, I am limited by your understanding. There is something about your understanding that is not allowing me bless you. And let me tell you this. You see why Jesus wept. Any man of God who is committed to transformation knows how frustrating it is. It is difficult to get members to receive. That's why we take our time and pray. Not necessarily because what we are saying saying it's not necessarily the prayer that brings it are we together when revelation comes the truth is there but praying that when the seed is planted that the minds of the people can receive let me tell you less than 10 percent of members really follow and grow on the information they are given that's why testimonies are scarce that's why there are supernatural instant testimonies but not sustainable ones you will hardly see a member testify back to back for two months 
he usually will come once and you don't expect to find him again because most of the testimony was not gotten through knowledge prophetic intervention one miracle here i fell under the anointing and the next day this happened so i get a job by a prophetic word but i never get promoted you see that because the understanding that will make me that 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 trustable is not there i had the privilege to have a conversation with a very very notable uh, man you know one of the you know the second in command in one of the great institutions in this nation and then while he was talking to me and we we're discussing he told me he said my apostle let me tell you it is not true that there are no jobs it's just that the level of mental depravity of the average young man with risk and this is a born again believer he said we are frustrated every time we take people to come for interviews as they talk we just continue to look at them and the privilege of marking school of ministry scripts has taught me that it is true you know we insult lecturers we insult everybody they gave me they gave me i have done at least you know i love god and i love you i have marked things that i've said my god how in the world does this person plan to that's why teachings like it doesn't matter what happens in your mind just receive the anointing and rise we like it because we know that what is in there if god is going to remove it it will take time but i tell you don't fight with the spirit sit down and let him take that thing let him edit your understanding and plant the word of god and my brother and my sister you will watch your life rise to reflect what god is putting within you this is another place where the error of speaking without transformation comes just to call it no sir to wear it's like opening a tap and there is no container to receive it the prophet was only comfortable to prophesy when there were vessels because the oil would be wasted without vessel to just believe that you just keep calling things at random to your life with an empty mind is a joke this is Scientology and you have to be careful with all these materials we read around about the universe and all of this let me tell you by the grace of God God has granted us the privilege of light in this ministry from any dimension you look at it where vast people who are keen on knowledge so we don't speak from a standpoint of ignorance whether from business from ministry from whatever we are we are by the grace of god enlightened enough to provide the guidance that gives you balance i can tell you many people will continue to be frustrated because they lack the understanding on how the kingdom of god and his systems accurately work are we together be fruitful is not just a prophetic declaration alone that happens automatically be fruitful leads you through a process and the first of the processes is to allow the word of god to find expression in your spirit then to find expression in your mind the moment your mind begins to transit start rejoicing with no idea yes sir start rejoicing because inevitably the physical equivalent of everything that is already happening will begin to come to you in 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 circles of what you will think are coincidences but they are orchestrations based on a spiritual law i was sharing with the leaders and i said every time the student is ready the lecturer always shows up every time the student is ready the lecturer always shows up be fruitful he's not just speaking to your body be fruitful be fruitful be fruitful this is what will put money in your pocket be fruitful it is not the capital that is given to your hands that makes you fruitful it is not the business the investment or the job the job is only a physical platform to give your understanding expression to reward you nobody prospers from business nobody prospers from investment nobody prospers from jobs you prosper off your understanding all of these things are simply platforms that give your understanding room that's why two people can have the same platforms but different understandings and all those vehicles will produce at different rates even in the good soil it produced 30 fold 60 fold 
hundredfold. The same way we have several people here in Koinonia. Many of you are members, workers, and leaders, but your results are produced at different rates. Same anointing, same mentorship, same programs, same teaching, different results. All producing. Are we together? If you want to be fruitful, your assignment is not to just start buying good clothes. Thank God for that. I say this because you see, young people have a pressure that society is pushing on people now. They look at you and say, since when did you graduate? You say, five years. Say, you are still dressing like this. And the next thing, God blesses you with 30,000. Off you go to somewhere in anger. I must buy stretch jeans. 30,000. I must buy this and that. And you shop it. You, 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 you shop physical things and then you put yourself under pressure and then you come back and say, look, this is to announce to you I have now improved. We say, why? You say, because I have a bigger house. Because I have a bigger car. Because I have a bigger this. I have that. To me, that, that is increased. No, sir. And your mind keeps saying you are wasting your time. You only bought something for someone else. I look at your mind and the only thing you have bought is a book because that's the only thing that has stayed in your mind. That's why nobody can steal the book because your mind caught it. Every other thing can be carried away because it only came around your life but not in your mind. The wealth must be gotten here before it comes here. Are we together? Yes. Apostle, now if somebody gives me money to start a business, can't I just start and prosper? You will fail. It's not an insult. You will fail. 99% of the people who want to start business will fail. Not because there are statistics of failure. Your mind, you do not have the understanding of the system to prosper. Anybody who wants to prosper, your first assignment is to look for references and models. Transformation is easy when there are references. Not activity, not action. No. Listen, when there is no reference, your, your mind operates with imagery. And the moment there is no reference for the possibility that you want to step into, you are not going there. Hmm. Who is God speaking to? That this thing you are doing, you are just dreaming until there is a reference that's why by the grace of god we continue to walk with the holy spirit that he continues to lift us to make us better references listen let me tell you this if you sit under an apostolic ministry walking in signs and wonders you will enter into that grace fast because there is a reference your spirit can easily pick are we together if your pastor is a poor man by the grace of God, you will grow in the word. But it's going to be difficult because there is no reference. There is an impartation that results on themselves bring to you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's very important. That's why it's important. Every ministry and every organization rises to reflect the mindset of the leaders. It is true. Koinonia is a reflection of our mindset and also a reflection of our limitation. If you look at Koinonia and you see anything wrong, it is a reflection of the areas where personally my understanding and our understanding has not been well constructed. Our assignment is to bridge that gap as fast as possible through knowledge so that you will build what is akin to an edifice, a proof of mastery. As you grow, notice you grow in the secret, but you see your result on the members. You stay in the secret and God brings a new level of the anointing and you start watching in the physical to see. They were not there when God was giving you those new dimensions, but then you begin to get it. A time will come in this ministry, you will start seeing people have cars in strange ways. A time will come, you will see people start having certain results will rise. It is not just their personal faith, it's that there has been an upgrade in the secret place that can now receive that level of reality. A time is going to come when we will get our own property and sometimes it can be within two, three months and everything is put in place. You would think it just came. No, the lifting in the spirit. God now says, now you have the capacity 
there are things if God gave me today, I prayed for it for years. But I look at it today and I thank God for not answering those prayers. Because had he given me, it is true that you would have been a waste. The same way you have been praying. Notice that certain things seem to never get answered in your miracle service request. And it is not always that demons are stopping it. It is God's mercy that is keeping it from you. Because it will be a waste. And if you lose it, it will take a long time before it comes. So God will keep it for you. And let you just wallow in your interpretation, calling it delay. Whereas God is keeping it like a faithful caretaker until your understanding is able to sustain it. Are we together? Yes. This book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate, 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 meditate. Value for the word of God. Listen, let me tell you, I, I look at people in this ministry and I am blessed the way God is lifting people in this ministry. Sometimes I, I, I know how I met them and I know how they came and see the power of the word of God transiting people the word of god is not a charm the word of god is a compendium of the principles of god the understanding of the systems of god and obtaining grace to engage them is what changes your life listen a day will come you will sit down and say god stop giving me money as far as my personal needs are concerned i don't know what to do and god says it's an irreversible process it will keep coming so god will say divert anyone to the kingdom but to stop it it can't happen again Wait till I teach you on wealth this year. God taught me something new. Ah! You see how you clapped? It's a reflection of the passion and the prayer. Oh God. Well, and it's not an insult. It's a wonderful thing. But let me tell you my brothers and my sisters. If this mind does not change, your life will not change. A man is in bondage when his mind is in bondage. No matter how free he is, he is bound. Watch my knee was bound and kept in prison many things happened to him but when they bound him he spoke loudest because his mind was still alive hallelujah glory to the lamb glory to the father he was seated on the throne hallelujah encourage you sit down sit down we're going to pray we spend time worrying about people who don't like us do you know if they are not in your mind they can't do you anything wickedness only hurts you to the degree to which you allow it to step in it's true that you immune your mind that you come from a family where people say you too you want to rise you are also joining them you are coming to that that stupid place where there are you people are just jumping for nothing and you feel stupid and sometimes in that stupidity you open the gate of your mind and allow them to enter when they enter your mind you are gone set a guard over my mind it was a prayer set a guard Lord, that no matter what happens around my life, shield my mind and my life is safe. If you injure yourself, it can heal. Are we together? But the Bible says a broken spirit dried the bones. The bones can be healthy and the spirit broken and the bones begin to reflect what is happening. You don't off this light by breaking every bulb one by one. The light is reflecting the health of a generator and the health of a switch. Just because one switch is faulty, every healthy bulb will remain off at the mercy of one switch. The focus, my brother and my sister, is not in doing physical things. This anointing and this lifting you see, is not by physical connection. 
I'm a good musician. Invite me. I promise you that in the name of Jesus, I will rise. No. Let me tell you how to be invited. Stay in the secret place. Allow the spirit of God to brood. He will give you one song. He knows what men cannot resist. He will coordinate by all grace and anoint you one song that you will raise. People, and he will make sure the ear of the person who can help you hears that song. And he says, who sang this song? Come to my church. He will array every other helper and he will anoint you so lavishly that day. You, you rise like a spring up and never go down again. The systems of lifting are very easy when your understanding is in place. It is difficult for God to lift a man whose understanding is unfruitful. You will frustrate the potentials of the spirit. Listen, brothers and sisters, this is a call to sit down. This running around and premature manifestation, comparing yourself with yourself, the Bible says they are not wise. The key is to sit down. Someone will come dressing sharp like Sam is looking and try to intimidate you and say you have been in this area for years. The only thing I hear is ba 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 and your empty head, empty pocket, oh yeah, take and go and buy Indomie and you feel stupid as you go to the shop with 1,000 naira and say, God, is this how you plan to disgrace me? And God will say, if I give you money, have I not insulted you? Listen, brothers and sisters, don't be so poor that all you have is money. If all you have is an object you remove from your pocket or an object that is stored in a bank out of fear, you are truly poor. Follow me when I finish those words. I told you be fruitful. We are just starting. Then there is multiply. Then there is replenish. Then there is subdue. They are not the same. Never be poor such that all you have is just money. If all you have is money, you are extremely poor because there are many things money cannot do. Most poor people agree with what I'm saying because they have been angry about money since, not because they understand it. You say this in an average church and people say, yes, it's true. It's just an opportunity to be angry at something they've tried to get. But it is true. God is giving you what is better than money. You know this issue of saying this person is worth this. Worth that. Oh, Pastor Alpha, you are worth 10 million. What, what nonsense. What do you mean I'm worth 10 million? No. What do you mean you are worth 100 million, 1 billion? Those are just carnal expressions. Sensual manifestations. And it's not just, oh, I'm worth the blood of Jesus. It's true too. But you can be worth something solid that is greater than money. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on. Listen, I have taught you that there are things when you have in life, only the poor need you. There are things when you have in life, only the rich need you. There are things when you have in life, only the educated need you. There are things when you have in life, only the uneducated need you. There are things when you have in life, only children need you. There are things when you have in life, only young people need you. There are things in life when you have, only old people need you. But my brothers, there are things when you possess in this life. When you possess it. There, listen, listen, listen. You walk life at your terms. The great see you and call you great. This is what God is giving you. Sit down. We are going to pray. Listen, look at me. Make no mistakes to think all this labor is simply to get money to your pocket. If that's all I'm doing with this teaching, I've insulted you. I deserve to be arrested for insulting you that bad. If all that we're doing in Koinonia is just to get you to a point where you can have a car or a house, it's an insult. You don't need to hear what I'm saying to buy a car or a house. What I'm giving you will make kings stand before you and look at you. Listen, they will come with their pride and hang it like Sheba in front of your door and stand and say, teach us wisdom. Are you getting me? I pray in the name of Jesus that you understand that there is a more superior way of living. 
I can meet Sam and Sam can bring out some money to sow into my life as a man of God and I collect what Sam has brought and I believe I'm valuable because he gave me some money I look at the money and smile and then I run away no listen when you get what I am teaching you and putting in your mind you will find out that the equation that the world uses a young man you save for 10 years and get a house that equation is for some people I'm exempting you from that list are you getting what I'm saying listen to me oh borrow money from the bank and build a house then repay over 30 years no there is a dimension that when you have my brothers and my sisters an estate developer will come to you and look at you and say can I give you the privilege I've taught you something look at this isn't it amazing that the greediest people in the world are still givers it's just that you are not the one they give to let me tell you this there is nobody that is really greedy they just believe you are not deserving of that level of communication some of our parents we will call them and say daddy support me and they will refuse yet a man of God will come to the city and they will carry ten times the amount you have been begging and kneel down and say sir can you give us the privilege to sow they are not greedy they just believe it's unfair to give you that much listen your pride should not be a car your pride should not be good clothes what you are receiving you have left the level of car and clothes since what you are waiting for now is the systems that bring them i want you to believe in what i'm telling you if you think right now what you are getting is what will give you a car what will give you a car finished since 2013 14 you are receiving what will subdue nations not a car what is a car what is a bank account how many what is a visa to go to abroad london is it jupiter listen be careful the things that represent your expectations don't shortchange yourself god is giving you the keys of the hearts of kings of nations not not some little one one jeep here one this and you say now i have a jeep my mind oh, god no please a time will come we'll just sit down and testify and we'll be grateful god just did this and that and that to be an insult that what you are learning now is just for an estate now an estate a car my brothers and my sisters be patient with god and be patient with me and watch what your life becomes it's a guarantee that i give you by god we're not talking of buying a car we're not talking of buying clothes we're talking of shutting the gates of nations i had the privilege to meet with a very great woman of god who is also a business person and while we were talking she was telling me her itinerary and she said she's on her way to france right now that the president of france they need to have meetings I said this is it whereas some mediocre somewhere is there harassing people just because he bought an expensive shoe there are people deciding the destinies of nations a president of a nation like france calling for you to sit down this is what god is training you to become the level of anointing you are receiving is not to compare yourself with somebody in your family to say i am first that's mediocrity that is for somebody who is just passing koinonia to go to his house that's what that person receives as the gift for just passing to go i testify testify that your goodness is real i testify that your goodness is real your goodness is real, I testify. Your goodness is real, I testify. Listen, the work you are doing in your destiny is what you are doing now. A time will come when from morning till night, all that you will see 
is testimonies of men coming to serve your needs it will surprise you and because you will not be a man of god as it were you know most times we've thought that these things only happen to men of god it's not true these are the systems of the kingdom you've heard me say that we will all be great and that we will all know ourselves keep watching keep watching what our children will be keep watching most times people don't believe truth until it's too late there are people today who look and say i used to know this man it's not used to know god is giving you an opportunity to catch a flight that only the hand of god can limit where it is going it is by the spirit listen this tonight is a message of hope so that this pressure to prove a point throw it out of the window you have left that realm since hear what i'm telling you you have left that realm since pressure to prove a point oh apostle I'm, my desire now is to trust god let me just get a four bedroom flat and god says but you got a four bedroom flat right when koinonia started it is just coming through the loins of time to manifest who through faith subdued kingdoms there are some of you let me tell you when you're you see this is why when you see the physical manifestation of certain people's results the level of their transformation does not allow them to start physically at certain levels you see god jump to a height is because of the vastness of their level of understanding there are some of you here you will be surprised that your first car will be a jeep and people will be angry not because a jeep is anything god says if if i will have to be this is the fairest i can be to you based on how you have transited and then you will be surprised to find out that while you were thinking god would just give you a two-bedroom flat and this and that god will bring you to a five-bedroom flat and god will say this is just to give you the convenience to start out in life and people will be surprised because it's not in your heart it's amazing how believers mark time under certain achievements it tells you that they didn't plan to go far one man of god sent me a text sometime and he said somebody sent him five thousand dollars said apostle i can't believe i'm holding dollars five thousand dollars and he was shouting he was saying oh god thank you and i sent him a text after a long time i said mister <clears throat> be careful that can be the very reason why you go down if your whole life is worth five thousand dollars you are very small are you getting what i'm saying that one person here one person will be able to have the resources that can completely clear an idp camp one person without making noise this is what god is raising you to become and you will not even consider yourself to be a kingdom financier doing that you are just somebody who loves god Hi. be patient be patient i cause the spirit of hurry be patient be patient watch what our children in koinonia become when they are five ten you will look at their lives and you will see how wealthy they will become independent of your contribution by engaging the world themselves there are some of you seated here right now and all you are dreaming of is starting your church and the anointing on you with all humility even many overseers do not have it and god says sit down there just sit down because i'm not giving you a church i'm giving you territories territories not just a small church to flatter yourself and compare yourself between a group of pastors and say i am better no sir no sir i testify testify that your goodness is real I testify, testify that your goodness is real. Hey, your goodness is real. I testify. that you think God did not answer 
he's answered it since it's just that you didn't know how the answer comes he answered it since some of you god looked at your prayer request and all he saw was a blank sheet because everything you wrote you are bigger than it already and god did not see a need god is saying you've not given me a prayer request you wrote nonsense there lord if i can just have thirty thousand every month and lord if i can and god just looks at it and says the level of the work that is in you can only allow for minimum a hundredfold return i say god but i'm a village boy i'm a village girl and god says leave all of that one and stay with me listen beware of the pride of unbelievers respect unbelievers who have gotten knowledge but there are many unbelievers who are ignorant and you see them doing making all kinds of noise they will rubbish you and make you look small i sense that there is a spirit that is just going around great believers to make them feel small to make them look like we have waited so long is it that god cannot give you a shoe what is in a shoe that god cannot give you what is in a cloth you mean you are still using a, a second hand with one ah, but you should have left this level and you go back feeling stupid and god says my daughter forget about this are you ready to pray be fruitful he's giving you the keys of nations the keys the keys the keys not the key of a territory the keys of nations listen today by the grace of god koinonia has become like a place of pilgrimage you cannot believe the number of people who want to come here for visit i've had to restrain many of them pleading with them because I think that we may not have the facilities to truly honor them as we should. It is not location. It is not where you go. When you stay with God and the light shines from you, my brothers and my sisters, you will become a praise of nations that people will look at you and our family will say, we've been praying for rising. We didn't know God answered it in a person. We thought God would shift us to another territory. Lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit and say, Lord, thank you. Though my beginning may be small, though my beginning may be small, but my latter end, though my beginning may be small, if someone pray, I am fruitful. I may not yet manifest fruitfulness in my pocket. I may not yet manifest fruitfulness in a job. I may not yet manifest fruitfulness in my business but in the name of Jesus I declare that I am fruitful Gentiles to my light Gentiles to my light are you praying koinonia shalaka be fruitful be productive God is altering your thoughts altering your understanding we win by the health of our spirit man and the health of our understanding God is showing you the laws of the spirit showing you success systems take your eyes away from the physical results I assure you nothing will stop them from coming men may mock you they may laugh at you where is the increase in ministry if you are really anointed where are the invitations to travel around if you are really anointed who is placing a demand on your grace they will say but forget about them and stay with the god of all flesh let him walk upon your spirit let him walk upon your mind allow that pregnancy that is in your mind allow it to reach maturation and watch the wonder that you will produce your goodness is real testify your goodness is real your goodness is real Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to challenge the spirit of impatience.
listen God is a God of speed but God only gives you your inheritance when you are built up everybody say built up be careful with unhealthy comparison business people listen career people listen we were all classmates now this one is like this this one has two houses and i am here nothing is moving be careful if you see that in your life know it's an attack listen listen especially for our dear sisters listen to me my adorable ladies let me tell you this you listen to what this arrogant world without christ is telling you you will not amount to anything they will make you feel stupid for loving god they will make you feel stupid for staying and growing you will look so cheap and weak but you stay and let god adorn you like hadassah and lift you like a trophy in one day one day what is a prayer point of nations come to you because you are prepared don't be ashamed of where you are you are still fruitful don't be under pressure listen listen let me tell you this if you can conquer the pressure of proving a point you have conquered life the pressure of proving a point I need to prove to the people in my family I need to prove to the people in my village they've been saying what are you doing in Zaria for five years eh? are you cursed that your life is not rising hold on when God is done with you ah, my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by Let me tell you a humorous story and then we'll pray some time back i was to inv be invited somewhere one of the places that i went to minister and a man of god was called and asked and said do you know apostle joshua selman and he said well i've heard about him but i don't know him and the man at the other side of the phone advised the the people to invite me and said Can't, we don't know this man don't invite him rather invite a b c d and the person at the phone said you don't know the encounters i've had with this man it's impossible for us no matter what you say we must invite him that's what happens when you wait for god there are men that continue to pray secretly why don't you fall so that it will justify their prophecy but my brothers and my sisters when god puts something in your spirit and put something in your mind you have watched people waste their time forever they will waste their time forever it is the finger of god that lifts you and keeps you they will finish a meeting and say don't promote pastor alpha sit down here he will never rise just when they finish the man goes back and by the next day the promotion letter is out listen there are not too many people like us on earth it's important for you to understand this it's not pride it's a breed that is plucked out of fire your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. and admire today will be the things that will follow you tomorrow you would drive them and they say we can't go you called us you called us but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his methodology his systems and all other things is a guarantee except this word your certificate can only take you so far your intellect can only take you so far but my brothers and sisters i commend you to god he says i commend you not just to your certificate 
not just to the advantage of your tribe not just to your family connection i commend you first to god and then to the word of his grace and he leaves you with an assurance that it is capable of building you up and giving you an inheritance a time will come those who mock you will give up they will see that you have risen to a height and a level where it will be stupid to talk about you the lifter of men lifting you I like you to decree and declare no power is stopping me from being fruitful fruitful in my spirit fruitful in my mind koinonia you pray the anointing is growing in my spirit i'm full of the power of god full of the holy ghost some may trust in shadows and others horses but i trust in the name of the lord i may not have relatives to back me i may not have a wealthy family to support me but i have received god and the word of his grace that is able 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 to lift me outside i will pray why we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal 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 Hallelujah. Be fruitful. Carry that mentality. Every time the word of God says be fruitful, the devil takes you to your ATM and says how much is there. Every time the word says be fruitful, he says so why are you thinking of paying rent? You are even trusting God to raise the money for the rent. Does that look like fruitfulness? Let me tell you, the devil is a liar. He's a master of the sense realm. And if you dwell there, you will say, where are the members? You have 10 members and you have the effrontery to say you are fruitful. Are you ready to prophesy to yourself? Spirit, soul and body, I am fruitful. Decree and declare. I will make you exceeding fruitful. Nations will come out of you. And kings out of your loins. Businessman prophesy. Yes, sir, with no evidence. I am fruitful. I am fruitful. Blessed is the man that shared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endures forever. Man of God, I do pray. I'm fruitful. The anointing is at work in my life. Nobody can reject the investment of the Holy Ghost upon my life. It may take time, but I'm rising in the name of Jesus Christ. My family members may not yet see the hand of God upon my life. Everybody around me may doubt the finger of God. I may even doubt it myself, but I hear the command. I am fruitful. I am fruitful. In spite of your failures, I am fruitful. Declare fruitful. Hallelujah. That's my mindset. Fruitful. 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 Take your eyes away. I am fruitful. The landlord harasses you is true and fruitful still fruitful you may not have money to prepare a meal but in the name of jesus god is doing something the wealth is not transferred to your account the wealth is transferred to the soil of your mind our god is an awesome god he reigns from heaven above with wisdom power.
last prayer chapter 2 and verse 5 don't forget Philippians let this mind let this mindset let this body of understanding be in you listen hold on every great man you know is who he is not because of the wealth and the affluence the wealth and the influence is a receipt for something you have paid for when you see money in your pocket that money is a receipt you get receipts only when you have bought things the good shoe is a receipt the good clothes is a receipt the first class flight is a receipt it is not the reason why you are blessed it is the proof that you are already blessed are you getting me now how many of you know that sometimes when you go to a mall after you shop you have to patiently wait on the queue for the next cashier to attend to you that's what is happening to many of us you have already bought the things you are at the point of completing that transaction and then life will hand you the receipt it will come as a car it will come as open doors it will come as you never having to follow the bus for anything again it will come as you having the convenience to do certain things for the kingdom but until then be patient for some of you you are you, have, you are standing on that queue just waiting for your turn to come and my brothers and my sisters you will come up with a level of results that will surprise you can i tell you this don't be afraid of results that came through understanding don't be afraid of results that came through understanding most times you see because of the multiple failures like the man who planted when you plant by the wayside when you plant by the rock when you plant upon thorns that experience alone may make you think even the good soil will fail but you see when that seed begins to grow and becomes a great tree it will not only bless you it will bless the birds it will bless everybody who is passing around that's what god is doing with us are you getting what i'm saying very very important you are receiving something you are receiving the anointing but you are receiving an understanding so don't let the devil come and begin to talk jargons you will fail in your life you will fail in your business you will fail in marriage you will fail in um, um financially you will fail spiritually that organization you cannot be able to run an organization you, you cannot be able to run a ministry who told you that do you not know that it is wisdom and knowledge that creates stability they are the stabilizers of destiny and that's what god is doing so we are going to pray lord reconstruct my understanding to be able to receive the things that will make me fruitful lift your mind your, your voice and pray reconstruct my understanding reconstruct my understanding lord there are things in my mind that may not allow me to be fruitful i acknowledge them are you praying I acknowledge that there are limitations, territorial limitations, tribal limitations, sociological limitations. I've interacted with a kind of people who have kept me bankrupt mentally. They may be my family members, they may be my relatives, they may be my classmates, they may be well-meaning people. If someone pray, Lord, I give you the allowance to alter my understanding. There is something I know or do not know about ministry that is allowing me to be unfruitful. There is something I know or I do not know about finances that makes me to keep going up and down. There is something I know or do not know about the anointing that doesn't allow me to host very superior levels of grace. Quicken my understanding. Quicken my understanding. Quicken my understanding. Hallelujah. I apologize for taking time the holy spirit is giving me a scripture isaiah 11 and verse 2 what's still praying? isaiah 11 and verse 2 can you still have it projected isaiah 11 and verse 2 let's see if we can find it let me turn it here to save time isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2 hmm. i'm handing over to you a secret is a secret that make men really great and the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him the sevenfold manifestation of the spirit of god and the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord verse 3 it says and shall make him of quick understanding quick all of these spirits synergize themselves to make sure your understanding is quick 
this is what you have to pray a quickened understanding is a real miracle you can have as a student a five point c gpa yet your understanding is unfruitful the fortitude to understand life to know wisdom is understanding you become a priority personality by default your understanding upgrades you like you are upgraded from economy to a business class to first class your understanding upgrades you to a level in life where you never have to come down again you are not trying to stay it has stabilized you at a realm are you ready to pray finally lord quicken my understanding i confess that there are gaps in my knowledge i confess that there are gaps i i am learning already but my foundation is fighting my mindset i am i am still loyal to old ideas i am still loyal to old concepts lord is taking me a hard time to acclimatize myself to a new system of lifting i cry for mercy and i cry for grace is someone praying I am still sympathetic to a, a depraved level of thinking that will not allow you to do business with me. Hallelujah. A prophetic word is only useful when there is a vessel. The vessel is your heart. The vessel is your mindset when the Holy Spirit renews your mind it's like it's like a welder creating a container and once everything has been welded well then prophecy can deposit that spiritual investment upon you and you will find out that you will retain strong men retain wealth not money wealth the wealth of the anointing retained by strength not the strength of the flesh be strengthened in your inner man inner man that's where true true strong people are even physically if you are stronger than me it doesn't guarantee that you can defeat me is that true because my mind can create a strategy that will defeat you that's how it is it is not always to the physically strong it is not always in physical agility but the health of your spirit mind and a well-developed understanding you see i teach you and continue to stand with the holy spirit to work on our minds because as your mind begins to seek transformation it must be guided are we together the mind is like a womb seeking for any kind of seed and there are other seeds in other sessions i will show you that there is the part two of that parable that Jesus gave. We'll go to the part two. While men slept. That's the part two of that story. Another sower also came and sowed a seed and left. So there are many sowers. And there are times you can open up your heart because you want to succeed. You open up your heart to zodiac and Scientology and all kinds of things to try to manipulate the cosmic world to release energy and once have I spoken and twice have we heard that all power belongs to God there are certain liftings if it happens it is only God that can do it are we together I declare over your life in the name of Jesus be fruitful in the name of Jesus be fruitful in your spiritual life be fruitful in ministry be fruitful in business be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare for many of you it will do you like a dream for many of you this is the week that your manifestation begins in the name of Jesus and I speak over you that my God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency that you will abound in every good thing I decree and declare be fruitful be fruitful in your spirit mind be fruitful in your mind may the spirit of grace coordinate you to the exact information required for your lifting and I pray for courage there are people you have to say no to and have the grace to say look 
I love you, but I have a track record of you being the reason why my mind will not receive the things of God. You don't have to hate people, but it's time to construct your environment creatively to allow the Spirit of God bless you. You don't have a serious meeting outside on the road. You go to a boardroom. You need to make that atmosphere for the spirit of revelation to come. And sometimes you need to take away distractions, distractions, distractions. It can come in form of good friends who will never allow you sit down and think. And this affects all ages and all ranges. There are people who have made a commitment to go nowhere. You don't have to hate them. Like Abraham, when you get to the base of the mountain, plead with them to remain there. If not, they will not allow you offer Isaac and be the father of nations. Are we together? I decree and declare this weekend for many of you, by the spirit of the living God, return with strange testimonies. There is an increased grace for performance in this house. I decree again in the name of Jesus, return with strange testimony. Yeah. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. <laughs> All through this week, the weekend into next week, I'd like you to carry this mindset. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. The focus is not just on your hands. The focus is on your mind engage what i've told you go and sit down go on youtube sit down don't search nonsense don't go on youtube and sit down searching movie and watching this i was teaching the leaders in my opinion i'm not on any social media platform but i think one of the most useful social media platforms in my opinion is youtube it's true there is almost nothing that is needed for your lifting, even customized to edit nonsense that you will not find there. You have the liberty to edit a lot of things and go for exact knowledge, whether it is about the anointing, whether it's about this. You can see it and get it away if it's not useful for you. But take away laziness, please, please, please. The phone God gave you is for your mind. Are we together? Yes. The song is ministering to your spirit. The truths are ministering to your spirit and your mind. Sit down. Sit down. Wake up in the night. Be intentional. Carry a notebook. Carry videos. Carry this. You may not have money to buy CDs, but God was able to ask somebody to send you 2,000. It's not just miracle alert. It's so that you can buy data and sit down what is the secret to this and this engage your mind engage your mind engage your mind don't be like the foolish virgins engage your mind carry extra oil it was time that showed who was wise and who was foolish all of them started as the same women all virgins time is what separated the wise from the foolish are we together please minimize roaming around the street if you cannot sit down in one place it's an attack on you it truly is an attack if you don't have anything doing outside for god's sake go back to your house go back to your house you must not just go around visiting everybody people are busy the time for visitation will come when you enter your sabbath but for now, sit down. I expect every young man to be up and doing. You wake up tomorrow morning, you don't just yawn and cross your legs. You get up and sit down. It's time to do something. In the name of Jesus, what am I doing today? I'm learning on the anointing. You write. You are studying scripture. Remember, God is giving you an international ministry. And you are not making noise. You don't need to know how much the price of suit is. Settle down now. Jacos Kaprakata. Your one, two, three hours daily prayer. Keep to it. Keep to it. Keep to it. You wake up in the morning. The cold is too much. Say, I resist you in the name of Jesus. I must get up. The foolish man, because of the weather, will not plant. He will say it's too cold. And he will not have anything to reap in harvest. Are we together now? <laughs>
and please let's help ourselves you see me speaking to you passionately our time is gone if you see somebody who is not settling down seriously and not serious with his life if you have access and you are a stakeholder in his life you can call him and say look my brother i appreciate you a lot but you are gallivanting up and down it's time for you to sit down today you are in this person's house next tomorrow you are there next tomorrow you are in abuja next tomorrow you are in lagos next tomorrow you are in mina please sit down one thing is needful this is what mary has chosen sit down your phone should not be for watching movie your phone is not for watching indian film it's not for soap opera you will not die if you don't watch those things my brothers and my sisters sit down sit down sit down there is a price for greatness every time you want to slack just remember your children whether or not you have physical children remember your children remember your aged parents remember the generation it will jack you up sleeping 12 hours you are causing your destiny are we together you must trust god for grace i told you especially for the gentlemen minimize snoring your night time night times are times when revelations come from heaven looking for men who are alert to come into their lives go and sell two of your suits and buy data and sit down if you need to trust God to buy a good phone and it is for the purpose of this I'm praying for you may my God give you a good phone if the purpose of buying a phone is to prove to somebody that the word of God is working may God make what I preach tonight after all this time I've spent to really re-echo in your head again in the name of Jesus Christ Father thank you we give you all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, you are the rock of our salvation. The Bible says, call unto me, Jeremiah 33 verse 3 said, and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things that you know not. And so Lord, we thank you. Honestly, we thank you. And tonight, you will exalt yourself in the lives of many people in this place. You will be exalted. You will be exalted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes it's good to visit these very deep, powerful hymns. They were not written by hungry people. They were not producing albums. Hallelujah. Some of these hymns were written by people who were very, very powerful people. They knew God personally. They were not just trying to do the kind of jamboree that we do in church today. Hallelujah. And it was from the depth of their experiences that they wrote certain songs. Be exalted in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we sing one more song? Be lifted high. Can you lift your hands as you sing this song? Lord, we exalt you. We're singing songs that lift him high. Listen to what you are singing. You're righteous. There is no deceit in you. Now sing it with faith in your heart. Believe that I believe that I believe that I oh Lord believe that I for you are Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hope ten people. Tell them you're welcome. It's good to see you. And be gloriously seated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
It's good to see everyone. We have a lot to do tonight. Hallelujah. A lot to do tonight. God is desperate to make sure somebody has a testimony in this place. Hallelujah. We're rounding up our family life series today. It's going to be powerful. Psalms 128. Tonight, we're going to cause the yoke of delay in marriage once and for all. I'm serious. Don't think we're playing. We don't just talk stories in this place. We're going to confront, we're confronting the gates of hell in a way that will shock you tonight. This is pre-miracle service. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're going to destroy a lot of things that have tied people's marital destinies. Let me tell you something. If you came here just drowsy and sleepy, wake up. Today's service is not the type you sleep in. Because whatever has refused to respond to your life and to your marital destiny will change tonight. Some of you will be standing for your loved ones. Could this be the answer to your prayer and fasting? So make sure that you are wide awake. If your neighbor is disturbing him, say, neighbor, we didn't pay money for this place. So behave yourself. Hallelujah. Psalms 128. Psalms 128 verse 1. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord. Say, I'm blessed. Because I fear the Lord. Say one more time. I am blessed because I fear the Lord. It says that walketh in his ways. Verse 2. For thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands. Who is God speaking to tonight? He said for thou shalt eat the labor of your hands. Happy shall thou be and it shall be well with you. Are you ready now? Verse 3. Brothers, can you say amen? amen. Thy wife. That means you will be married. I cause. Listen, listen. It says thy wife. It didn't say a stranger that is roaming around your house without identity. He said, thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine. Hold on. It didn't say your wife shall be as a vine because Jesus saw a fig tree that didn't bear fruit. He said, thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine. By thy side, no divorce. This is not the issue of fighting. He said, by thy side. And the last time I read my Bible, my Bible says Jesus was standing at the right side of the Father. They have not had any issue. There, there has not been need to separate themselves. Hallelujah. Everybody say thy children. thy children. I tell you the truth. The devil that is, a, is, is responsible for the barrenness of people and families. I'm going to be teaching shortly and we'll be praying this night. Light and darkness will clash. One must bow this night. I told you this is, this is pre-miracle service. Hallelujah. It says thy children like olive plants round about your table. Organize, discipline, visionary children. Not pouts, not thieves, not troublemakers, not terrorists. It said they will be round about your table, not in prison cells. They will be round about your table. Verse 4. Behold, that thus shall be blessed. That means this is a portrait. This is how you will know that a man is blessed of the Lord. He said whenever you see a man organized, married, with his wife by his side, well-behaved children, sitting around a table, that means there is prosperity there. He said when you see that, this is a portrait of God's idea of a blessed family. Say amen. Father, we ask you tonight, in the name of Jesus, do something in this place. You told me you will shake, tear down altars. Lord, it's time to let your people go maritally. We are, we are here tonight to confront the gates of hell and release your people. Enough is enough. It's good to have testimonies of cars, healings, miracles, but God wants you to be blessed maritally. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Genesis 1.28 
I'll be talking about three things and then we'll pray straight away. Hallelujah. And God blessed them. Say, and God blessed them. And said unto them, number one, number two, be fruitful, multiply. It says, replenish the earth, subdue it. Why will he say subdue it? Because there is an adversary roaming around. It says subdue, in other words, exert authority over him. And have dominion over the fish and all of that and all of that. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, how many of you have been blessed by the Family Life series? We started talking about a lot of things. Hallelujah. And by the grace of God, we have been able to cover some grounds. Remember our five love languages, the love and respect principle. For many of you who have not been around, please get it. It's very serious, very comprehensive. Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk briefly. I'll talk on three subtopics. Number one, the reason why people experience late or no marriage. The reason why people experience late or no marriage. Hallelujah. This is not so much of a teaching because I'm, I'm in a hurry to finish. I want to pray. Hallelujah. Honestly, I want to pray. We need to tear down walls because some of you have suffered things that the devil must repay back. A hundredfold, pressed down, shaken together. See, the Bible says if you catch a thief, you won't just say, sorry, I, I won't do it again. No, no. The Bible doesn't deal with thieves like that. It says if you catch a thief, who is a thief? Who is a thief? No, no, no. I didn't say who is the thief. Who is a thief generally? One who lays claim and steals what is not his own. There are many people that would have been enjoying the bliss of joy in their marriage and their family. And the devil has taken a lot of things. Many of you have been helpless. People think you are careless. But tonight, I tell you, we will expose that devil. God showed me this thing. By now, you should know. When you hear me talking like this, I have seen something. Hallelujah. The reason why people experience late or no marriage. Before we talk about Satan, we want to address a few things. The number one reason is unreasonable expectations. Everybody right. Unreasonable, ridiculous expectations. Hallelujah. Please look up. I found out that one of the reasons why a lot of people cannot get married is that their expectations are unrealistic hallelujah especially for ladies when you ask certain ladies ah what kind of guy do you want to marry they say me oh. the way i am like this even if that guy he must be six feet three six feet 2.9 is not for me you should be able to smile and be very nice. He should be able to speak Queen's English, not, not LEA English that is just basic enough to pass to get um what the, what's that <laughs> school living certificate. The guy must be able to have a good sense of color combination, he must be able to have this. There's, I have no problem against your list. The only question I have is, when will he have these things? Before or during or, if you wish, after the marriage. There's nothing wrong with having these wonderful expectations. My only question is when. Hallelujah. So all the brothers that have come, 58 over 60, F9. 59 over 60, F9. 40 over 60, F9. Hallelujah. Unreasonable expectations. There are many people, especially ladies, the, the way, the expectations you have carved out for yourself, the only person that fits that expectation is Jesus Christ. No mortal man can fit that expectation. Today, you see somebody that looks nice tomorrow and say, mm -mm, I don't like the way the guy smiles. Why is he too loud? And I want somebody that is... Ah. 
One man said the best way to predict your future is to create it. So that you don't disturb anybody. Create it by yourself. Hallelujah. Everybody say unreasonable expectation. Me have suffered in my life where I must marry a millionaire. I must marry a millionaire. There's no, you know when they are taking people for a job, they say you are a driver, you must have five years experience. Some of you, you must have five years experience with prosperity. You must know how to do this and that. He must have his duplex, so I'm not ready to manage inside one room that will be squeezing me. As you're laughing tonight, take it seriously because we have to solve. Some of us are the ones who open doors for delay in marriage. Financial status. Oh, he must be. No, no, no. I'm still under unreasonable expectations. Financial status. Brother, where are you working? There's one primary school here. The primary school, me. I, I'm, I, your father has warned you. Your mother has warned you. They say, don't bring any teacher for us here. I was a teacher. Your mother was a teacher. Change. And now you are waiting. You are hoping. Oh, Shell. NMPC. Where again? Say it. Chevron. Uh huh. Sir? Mobile. Look at the lady smiling. CBN. Nigerian Printing and Minting Company. Then go take group. And some of you are happy. Oh, this is the kind. I want somebody that when I stand by him, people will say, Kai, how did God locate you like this? Remember our song? I didn't know you will answer me this way. Listen, while that vision is good, let me tell you what the problem is. The problem is that with this kind of mindset, you will never be able to get married to the right person. You know why? Because oftentimes, God will tell you, go to your farm and harvest your crop. You will get to the farm and see a bag of seeds. Are you listening to me? With hoe on it and grace. These are the three things you will find there. But God told you, go and get a harvest. It is in God's nature to speak and call things as though they have already happened. So God will tell you a millionaire is coming to your life. And you just see a brother come and say, brother, where are you going? He's a shoemaker. He say, ah, God, this does not look like the prophecy. Unreasonable expectations. Physical appearance. I want somebody who is this and that. I want somebody, guys, I want a lady with this and that. I want a lady with dimples. I want a lady with another dimple here. I want a lady with dimple here. I don't want a lady that opens her mouth too wide. What are you looking for? Hallelujah. I want a lady whose hair, you know this Indian film they used to act. I want a lady whose hair is here. Hallelujah. I want a lady who is this. I want a lady who is that. I want a lady who is a top chef who has been validated by everybody to be able to eat. I want a lady who can drive. I want a lady who is this. I want a lady who is that. Unreasonable expectation. Hallelujah. When I was growing up, there was one funny film they used to show. Very nice and pretty. What's the name? Another Life. Man, some of you don't know it. Don't claim you know it. Some of you, where were you then? <laughs> Another life. Hear the name, self. Who will use that kind of name now? Media, that another life. They're using second chance and the rest. And I remember every time I saw some of the people, the, the actors and all of that, I used to look at them and say, ah, especially those who were wicked, they were not very good looking. And it used to pain me in the soap opera. And then one poor village pretty lady is the one that will keep telling lies oppressing and doing all of that i hated soap operas because I said, why is it that the fine 
very nice ladies and all of that. And as small as all, I had a dream. And my dream was that one day, one of the person who was acting, that by God's grace, if I may, oh. <laughs> Bible says when I was a child. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody say unreasonable expectation. My simple message for you tonight is that it does not happen before relationship. You say, ah, but does that... Is what, let me tell you something. Any success you did not invest in it, you are not qualified to partake. That's why there are some men that only married. There are some, come now, sweetheart, drop your Bible. There are some, there are some men who get married to a lady. They are married though. But this lady is like a stranger. You know why? The guy was already a multi-millionaire. And she's just one of the many things that happened to enter his life. Are you following me now? She has her room. The only thing he does is to sleep with her. That's all. And that's even when he wants. He's like the kings of old. So she's just roaming around like a nanny and a house girl. In her. That's, not, that's not a good home. Are you hearing me? Children say, mommy, one banana. I say, mm, go and ask your father. Me, ma, they brought me inside this house. <laughs> me, ma, I'm inside this house. No confidence. You know why? You were looking for something that could not be found and since you found what looked like it you have to pay the price there but a brother that you were there with them you soaked gary together he said how much do you have now don't worry see i don't have anything but i'm speaking god's word and you can see me i'm showing you the blueprint of what i'm doing now you brought the gary we drank together do you think if we enter the what can now <laughs> say something realistic don't tell me limousine say something realistic please a good car when we enter a good car listen do you think listen do you think this lady will be carried away by my prosperity because we have been there are you listening you grew into this thing together many of you don't want to grow into the blessings of marriage some of the wealthy people we know today ask them when they got married the man didn't even have a bicycle he didn't even have vision for some of them just one fellowship, they were strolling one day and God caught him. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. God started working. But now, the woman is partaking of the blessings. Whether you like the madam or not, she owns the company with her husband. Because they suffered. And she can look at you and tell you, I remember those days. Don't celebrate success that does not have history. It's fake. Any success that does not have history is fake. I assure you, if you are laughing, hold on, stop laughing. Any true success must have history. It is the history that will preserve you in that realm of success. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Very important. Unreasonable expectations. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I set realistic standards. Refer to our message. Um, I think that's um, Family Life 2. We, we stated some very clear and reasonable standards. Bless you, sweetheart. Thank you. Hallelujah. What you want does not exist for many of you. So you must come down and believe. It's still part of this running away from responsibility. Many people don't want to build. Many ladies don't want to build. What if I build this thing and later he says I'm not the one? The Bible didn't say you will reap where you sow. It said you will reap what you sow. Hallelujah. Number two. Now, this is important. Please, everybody listen. Health factors. One of the reasons why people do not get married or they marry late. Of recent, this has become a very, if you are involved in any kind of marriage counseling or maybe in your church and all of that, you know that this is a very big issue. Is that true? Health factors. The issue of genotypes, blood groups. I want you to listen very well. Because for you, what brought you to the sister is beauty. And the vision you saw for your mother or for your father they know the things that they've had to endure or somebody they know are you listening to me so they have parameters that may not appeal to you are you listening to me is someone following genotype what do you do listen what do you do when someone who is 
of a genotype SS. All right? Now you meet this sister, you love her, two of you are getting together, and then you find out that she's also SS. What do you do? And the thing has entered two of you. You have told yourself, do or die. Hallelujah. Now you've gone to meet the marriage council on your church, and they say, Tor, listen, no. We had the story of so 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 person like this, and they didn't listen to us. They gave birth to five children. The five children all died. Are you ready for all of these things? You know, is someone getting blessed tonight? These are not issues we young people consider. Ah, Ibuku, Jesus Christ, let Ibuku answer me. Oh. Hallelujah. Many of us are too afraid to even consider these things. Say, look. Let's just move. Let's not spoil what God is trying to arrange here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Health factors, blood groups, genotypes. These have become very serious issues. In many churches, I know that this, this thing varies from church to church. Is that true? And I know that there are rules already in some churches. They don't take it. They don't care what you saw or what you had or how long you have been together. Once they find out that your genotypes are not compatible, they advise you strongly and guide you towards leaving one another. They say, no, please, we can't take it. We are not ready. And from the human perspective, please listen, because some of you have insulted all these people. Let me tell you something. From the human perspective, history has shown us that these kinds of things have brought a lot of problems for families. SS marries SS or AS marries this and then they have children who keep dying or children who are having you know a lot of problems the father has problems the mother has problems and you know in quotes they become like a liability to a lot of people family members loved ones they now kick the man out of his job now what do you do look up because some of you probably are in that situation right now as I'm speaking and you're trusting God for guidance so, your father or mother said, see you, this guy, you won't marry the person. For 10 years, you poor are together. They say, I won't you marry. They say, don't worry, we're organizing things. I say, this is what is happening. Late marriage or no marriage. This is one very serious reason. Now, if you don't believe in the supernatural, here's my kind advice. Quietly live. Did you hear what I said? I'm giving you an advice that may not make sense now. But I'm a, if you do not believe in the supernatural, what did I advise? It is my advice. I didn't say God told me. Paul will speak and say, I speak as a man. You may have your relationship programs and somebody may have another opinion. The reason is because, listen, if you do not believe in the supernatural, what the medical science said will happen, will happen. Are you listening to me? And you will live your remaining 30, 40, or 50, life, uh, or 50 years in misery and pain. Let me tell you the truth. I've had the opportunity to pray for people and families with these kinds of things. And I know that this is not nice. There are situations where the whole family, father, mother, and the one or two sons, they are all down. What do you do? And for the rest of your life, there is torture from your family members. We told you. How many of you know that kind of thing? Well, thank God we have married people. We told you. Aaron, we warned you. Benga, you didn't hear. You were in love. Now, see, see what has happened. If you believe in the supernatural, you will get up and do something about it. Hello? That kind of supernatural that God will change it when he wants to change it. Uh -uh. That's not a valid supernatural. Alright? So, Come, sweetheart, again. Now, I'm SS, she's SS. Both of you have come and you have, you have found out that this is a serious constraint. But both of you are convinced. Listen, let me tell you. I hope you know God is not an author of confusion. And I hope you know miracles still work. We have seen genotypes, blood groups, whatever change here. So many of them. Now, what, what you would do, listen, I'm telling you what to do straight to the point. You agree and say, look, do you believe this can work? Because if you are the only one who believes it, the lady already in her mind, she has left you. She doesn't just want to embarrass you. Are you following me now? You say, let's pray. Ah, 
The lady goes back and says, Brother John, I've not really left you. It's just that, let's be patching it. Things are getting messy here now. You know, ladies have a very funny way of putting one leg here. They can detect when the bridge starts breaking. They won't tell you. They will just stretch their leg. London Bridge is falling down. So they'll, they'll just be patched. So that whatever happens, they can wage themselves quickly. If you are involved in that, repent tonight in Jesus' name. Double dating is wrong. Period. I don't care what you have, what you, you watched in your Nigerian film and soup opera. What Oprah Winfrey told you, Niger uh, what, I want to say Nigerian film is wrong. I like Nigerian films. Don't... Double dating is period. Hallelujah. Do you, the Bible says, can two walk together except they Amos 3.3. 3. So you must agree. Sweetheart, do you believe that God, are you convinced about this thing? Think about it again. If she needs time, don't be angry. She said, honestly, see, let me tell you something. Um, can you give me three days? Yeah, yeah. I've known. Three days. You don't, uh -uh. You, this, is, this is a very, very serious issue. Don't just get emotional and start shouting at the lady. Say, now, I'm agreeing. You are refusing. We have not even married. We are already quarreling. No, no. But if, listen, if you think both of you can work this out, can I tell you something? Seek advice and start working it early. Is that true? Because there are some of us that are very stubborn and have gotten ourselves in trouble. No! This is the guy your parents say, why don't, see, let me tell you. I believe in the words of elder so. I hope you're hearing me. I'm telling you the truth. Sometimes parents may not know why they are saying what they are saying. But I tell you, there is a depth of wisdom. You are, you are, remember our emotional obsession teaching. Hey, this thing is burning you. As your father or your mother is talking, it's entering here, flying out there. You are not hearing, no. Fix this wedding date. Let's do this thing and let the devil be put to shame. But they are telling you, listen, listen. You will get married, you will dance that day, cut cake, and everybody will go. The people who come for your wedding, see, there is a difference between wedding and marriage. Correct? Yes. Wedding is valid for 24 hours. Your marriage begins. Fry plantain for me, honey, I'm down. No, no, please. I'm working in this house to bring money. Me too, am I not suffering what you are suffering? This is how the trouble starts. So if you know, if you think you can believe God for it, honestly, I'm giving you a very honest and fair advice. Many men of God will spiritualize this thing I'm saying and just tell you, don't worry, things, just believe, claim it, take it. Mm -mm. It has led to a lot of casualties. If both of you cannot believe God for it, cry, fast, have your last supper <laughs> and end the relationship. Don't break it. Believers don't break relationships. They end it with wisdom and grace and bless one another. But if you can believe God for it, then start making efforts. When it's time for miracle service, you say, ah, where are you? you? say, I'm in the market. Say, leave that market. Oh, leave that market. We have something both of us have agreed upon. God will give you the miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless you. Right? Let's hurry up. Number three. Geographic, cultural, and family factors. Right? Why do people experience late marriages? Or why don't people... There are some families your parents have already given you warning right from when you were in primary school. You didn't even understand what they were saying. They said, see, bring, you know this globe that is in our house, map of the world. They zoomed it to Nigeria. They said, any state I draw a pen, let me not see you there. Are you ready? Yes. Number one. Number two. There are parents of, there are geographic factors that even in the same state, they tell you it's not enough. Is that correct? In fact, some, even in the same village, they say, uh-uh. This clan had this, this in 1921. They had a problem. Now, let me explain something you, that many people may not understand. 
You see, during the time of our parents, the world was not as heterogeneous as it is right now. Is that correct? Many people live in yards and compounds. All the ladies used to go to the stream together. So the guys could time. Natina. They could just see and know that, okay, in the next 10 years, let me just allow this investment to grow. In the next 10 years, I can be able to come and... So, they knew themselves. The parents knew the parents of the other person. Is that correct? They fought together. They celebrated festivals together. They did a lot of things together. So when you came and told your father that, ah, is Grace now, Mario? Where is Grace from? Sokoto, they say, ah, where exactly? Say, ah, I know the father now. Give me five. You're a very nice guy. This is the kind of thing we want. Geographic factors. What is the probability of finding somebody from your village who is born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, blessed, visionary? What is the probability? I, I, no, I want you to be very honest and realistic. What is the probability? So in our generation, there will be a lot of crossing of boundaries. Some of you, they wiped your whole village in war. You don't even, you practically don't have a village again. You put migrated somewhere. So when your father or your mother is saying they should get somebody from where? The old republic, your old place or the new one? Some migrated to Cameroon. Some ran, you know, all of these things. Full of, there are full of people that ran to Sokoto, some to Maiduguri, some to Gombe. So when you are saying a full and from where? You must marry a full and you. Benga, a full and or nothing else. Which one? Because they've scattered to different places. Hallelujah. It's my personal opinion that that should not be a factor. However, listen, you, you know that I will always balance things. Are you ready now? Some of you are already sad looking at me. Ah. This is the reason why some people have not married. Sister Mary, ha -ha, till now, see my third child, oh, see I must wait until my change comes. Since you were in the university, now both of you are doctors, not in. See, I'll wait, oh, I'll wait. cultural factors, geographic factors. And for many of the things that our parents do, what is their... I hope you know their, their excuses are legitimate, but we know more now. Are you following me? What's their excuse? When there is trouble, when there is fight, when you tear yourselves into pieces, they know your father, they know your mother, they can come and sit down. But where you cross boundary, Lagos and Maiduguri, who knows who there... They fought during the traditional wedding and promised themselves they will never look at themselves again. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm saying? Some of you don't believe. I'm advising you, you better free your spirit now. I'm giving you the reasons. Before we pray, open your mind and say, Lord, you will not destroy me. For the Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil. For other, other places, the parents say, Ah, the people in this place, they are witches and wizards. Let me tell you something straight to the point. The official religion of Africa was witchcraft. Every tribe, every state, everywhere. Is that clear? So don't start saying this state. They are every who doesn't know them. Eh? Now you want to bring trouble for us. As if it was missionaries that started your own state. Now, look, let me tell you something. Witchcraft, idolatry was the bane of the day in Nigeria. Everywhere. Every street has traditionalists, herbalists, has people who are practicing witchcraft. Killing people, eating, whatever it is. It's just that some have more than some. But everybody has it. 
are, are you listening to me? I'm very serious, please. As you're laughing, I hope you're getting me. So, don't ever use that as an excuse. Say, these people, everybody from their village. They, no. And now, listen. Our parents, listen. Our parents have had so many experiences that validate their claims. So, while you are trying to defend yourself, don't just look at them and say, old generation. Because I tell you something, they have testimonies of people who did not listen. Are you following me now? And they got married, running down the line, 10, 20, 30 years. Some of them are still suffering today. So, don't just kick what the parents are saying. Can I give you an advice? If you are crossing boundaries, know three things. Number one. Number one. wickedness territorial wickedness is real write it and never forget it if you are crossing boundary to any state or any local government be aware of the demonic predicaments around that place and be sure that you are ready to take the burden please look up i want to be very very i want to speak to you tonight look up please a lady, for instance, whose whole family, she has an extended family, all right, and say they are all Muslims. Are you following me now? And only the lady got born again. Are you listening to me? Maybe her father is this and that, her mother. There are a lot in their families. Now you are coming as a brother. You say, this is the lady I'm going to marry. I hope you know that there is a battle to fight there. Everybody answer me. If you pretend and spiritualize it, and trivialize it you're going to run into a lot of trouble is the battle because the lady is bad no but you see when you are married you are not just married to the lady you are married to the lady and everything associated to her are you listening to me to her troublesome auntie her diabolic uncle they are all your relatives now her money mongering cousins her materialistic nephews all together that's why they sold the ashoke for you to see them on the wedding day. We are now one. Hallelujah. So when you are crossing boundaries, be very realistic. I'm telling you, be very what? One lady called me one time and I won't mention names, but her father is a bishop. You know, somewhere, I think somewhere around the, maybe, southern, eastern side. And she told me that the guy buffs all his daughters with chicken before giving them out for marriage. The lady now, sorry. Are you listening to me? The elder sister, the father at her age, oh, whether whatever you he said, daddy, he said, look. You don't know what you grew up with. You are, we are the ones that have suffered this thing. Just keep quiet and let me bath you and you will go. So when it was the lady's turn now, she ran out of the house. So it was during her exodus that she called me. And she said, this is what they want to do to me. I said, you mean it? They said, they must do it. There is a covenant that had been running around their family that that's what they must do. Listen, I want to talk to you tonight. Hallelujah. So the man must bath them with chicken as they are, bath, they are making incantations. So they bath the lady. Her elder sister told her, I said, this is what I did though. That what they planned with the fiance is that immediately they finish. They just run mountain of fire straight. Lagos about that express with straight. They went there for deliverance. So they said, if you can do it. But the lady said, but I see, it's not like I'm in ignorance. This is taking myself to go and give the devil. Are you following me now? This is the reason why certain parents may not want people from certain places. That leads me to the fourth point. Demonic oppression. The reason why people do not get married. Demonic oppression. Demonic oppression. We live in a church that is so unaware of the activities of Satan. We are all new creation in Christ. The Bible says do not be unaware. I know people have exaggerated things when it comes to Satan and the things of deliverance. But let me tell you something. Demonic oppression is real. 
especially in marriage are you hearing me i'm giving you a frank and candid advice when you see us say go out with somebody who is born again and serious with god some of you think okay you know these guys have been demonic oppression is real the euphoria of your emotional attachment will fade when those demons begin to deal with you hallelujah let me stop there second subtopic so this is why people experience late marriage unreasonable ridiculous expectations health factors geographical factors demonic oppression if you don't believe in marrying people from other places pray you can negotiate with god he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him hallelujah if the trouble is too much you can say god can you give me a brother from Kano that loves god i'm from there for god's sake save me this headache god will bring a brother you come for koinonia you won't know what is bringing him the answer to so god, no god is faithful let me tell you our relationship with god is on a personal basis there is a way you can agree with god on some things and he will do it for you i assure you hallelujah have i helped you because some of you are saying can't we bend you mean there's no way out there is a way there is a way it's between you and god number two the reasons for fight in homes and unfaithfulness marital fights and unfaithfulness it's one thing to get married it's another thing to live in that home is that true many of our homes and our marriages are shattered in pieces and we need to find out what is wrong why do we have fights two people sorry Do you accept this? What you didn't wait for them to finish talking. Do you take this lady as your wedding? What? Yes. You far by the grace of God. Yes. Two of you said you you are you doing? Yes. Think about it. Oh, yes. Does anybody has anything any, against this marriage? Nobody's. Now we declare you husband and wife. You are hugging and kissing and you are happy. Two years later, the man looks at you. Who did I marry? He wrote songs, called you the lily of the valley, called you all kinds of things. Sugar in his tea. Mosquito in his net. After two years, three years, there is fight. Can I tell you something? Let me run faster than myself and tell you, sex is not enough to preserve the strength of marriage because i have seen people with eight children how did they get the eight children i will kill you this is a man that slept with his wife to have eight children now he will kill her hallelujah so what are the reasons do you know listen Statistic tells us that one out of every two marriages in America ends up in a divorce within the first five years. Right now, this thing has gotten so bad that in many churches now, you go to church and go to court too. It wasn't really like that, but what is happening in this society now? A man can be married and leave his state and come somewhere. And just be strolling come for koinonia see a very nice lady like this turn her mind like a pendulum and then get married to her go and buy small golf and give the parents the father will say you must marry this guy you must marry him we have suffered it's enough now you get married only to find out that you are the wife of somebody else's you are a concubine why do we have fights and then i want to tell you something the rate of unfaithfulness listen this is a study i made by myself the rate of unfaithfulness in christian marriages i was talking to my sister yesterday and she was telling me of a survey that they did in our local church not somewhere else our local church married women that are not submissive and ladies that are promiscuous that have really spoiled i don't mean uh, okay, you went and slept with somebody by mistake. Willful, willing, conscious, 
derailing from the things of God. When they announced the statistics to the church, parents were afraid. Parents were afraid. Fathers were afraid. Mothers. Nobody trusted themselves again. Which one are you in these statistics now? Because they didn't announce anybody's name. When my sister told me, he touched me. Hallelujah. Do you know right now, there is almost no trust in our homes. Hallelujah. Some of you, you are even in a relationship because of how the guy is behaving like an arm robber. Once he goes to his himself, you quickly carry the phone. Let me check. Who called? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then the guy will save the lady's name as Joseph. Oh, come on. We know these things. Say, ah, Joe, yeah. When you are moved, you say, ah, why are you calling me by this time now? You don't know my wife is at home. Immediately I come. Have you delivered it? Okay, I'm coming to Lagos first thing in the morning. Please don't waste my time. I, I need to spend time with my wife. I found out that I've not been spending time with her. And she's laughing, not knowing that the man is unfaithful. So why is this happening? I can act. If ministry didn't work, I would have done it. Hallelujah. Number one, the reasons why we have fights. Violating the love respect principle. How many of you remember our love respect principle? What's the principle? That husbands should do what? Love their wives. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 22 to 25. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, submit. You honor. I told you that love for a man means respect and honor. Nothing more, nothing less. To the degree to which you respect and honor your husband, that's the degree to which you love him. Hallelujah. And for the ladies, the degree to which you love her, you care for her, you give her time. Remember our five love languages. Number one, words of affirmation. Number two, eh? acts of service. Number three, receiving gifts. Only ladies are talking. Number four, quality time. Number five, physical touch. No, it's not. We're talking marriage now, so you don't need to start it. The star was before you get married. Once the pastor says husband and wife, God himself takes the star away. Until then, God himself stamps it there. If you force the door to open, it will open. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number one, violating the love respect principle. How many men don't respect their wives? Two of them go for a program. You see the man disgracing the wife. Have you seen some of our parents do that? Don't pretend as if, and, you, and it will be paining you. You see the woman will just keep quiet. Or the woman disgracing her husband. You go, there's small popcorn. You are about leaving. Uh, Madam, can I fetch for this? You are fetching. People are saying, what kind of woman is this? The husband is just standing. You don't know that you are bearing his image. The man is saying, honey, let's go. Say, I won't go. Let me do this. Do we have this in our house? And you are just fetching. The love respect principle. The love respect principle. All the guys say, I will love my wife. Say it, I will love my wife. And the lady say, I will honor my husband. So that's the number one reason. Number two. I won't talk much about that. We are not in a strict, only few people are married here, so I won't talk. Emotional dissatisfaction. Not satisfying themselves sexually and all of that. Leave it there. I'm not saying more. Hallelujah. Thank God there's marriage counseling. Go to your marriage counselor. Hallelujah. But emotional dissatisfaction. And this is not just sex. Spending time together, there is... An emotional dimension is limited before you get married. But when you get married, come on, it's part of what keeps the bond. It is a very serious reason why men, listen please. A woman who is busy, you are a tailor, you are a contractor, you have a restaurant, you are, you are in French school, you are learning another language. Every time you are your husband will say, oh, he will, you are embarrassing him. You are making him beg you to sleep with you. He will keep quiet. One day he will stop talking to you. Ah! You find out that your house help is happy, walking in the house, 
very excited. Madam, how are you? Fine. How is everything? God has been faithful. That's a sign that there's fire on the mountain. I'm giving you an honest and a very candid advice. Listen, let me tell you something. God who designed intimacy is not foolish. Are you listening to me? Violating any of God's principle, tithing, lack of intimacy, whatever it is, will cost you a lot. Sisters, let me advise you. You are not in your house. You are supposed to preserve and help the man. Do you know the wife is supposed to cover for the man? Your husband is a nice, handsome man of God. He goes to minister in a convention. God moves and honor you. You are there snapping. And they are saying, how does it feel to be, you know, this bishop's wife? You are talking. One other lady is giving him compliments. Say, sir, uh, please, God gave me this prophetic instruction. I, I need to come and clean your shoes, clean your trousers. The man says, and he says sir, I insist. Will you, will you hinder an innocent lady like the man? Says, All right, if you insist. Aha, uh -huh. you were not there. The media is carrying your face. You are happy. You never had it that good. Now you are enjoying it. Many women are careless about their men. I'm not saying just be irresponsible and you can't allow the man rest. He's having a meeting. You are in front of the, the meeting door. You are saying whatever this meeting is, it will finish in my presence here. There are women like that. This is insecurity. Your husband wants to book ticket. You are there. How many people? No, no. Trust. There must be trust. But in the midst of it, there are efforts that you must make. Are you listening to me? Don't allow any. You know, Christian homes, you can see a woman just come at an odd time and say, I want to come and visit your husband. She's calling him all kinds of names. An unbeliever will tell you straight there. I hope you know, unbeliever women, they, won't talk, they will say, please, call it jealousy, call it whatever. Let me tell you, let it not happen again. Church people, say, if I talk like that, what of in the fellowship? Uh-huh. It's until the man travels for a business trip four months. You are not there. Later on, one of his friends that cannot keep his mouth shut to say, Madam, I need to talk to you. This thing is paining me and the way I trust you, I must tell you. You see that hotel there? Your husband is there. Go and meet him there. For four months, he has been there abroad. <laughs> Emotional dissatisfaction is a very serious issue. Are you listening to me? I didn't want to touch the issue, but it's becoming necessary. Hallelujah. Brother, you are fasting. One week, two weeks, immediately you finish. You started Maranatha fast. You finish Armageddon fast. Now, wow. Why did you marry? Why did you marry? You would have stayed alone. There must be a place. When you get married, define your lives. Are you listening to me? It's very important. There's a book Ora Roberts wrote. One of the reasons why he said he was successful in ministry was he had very close sexual intimacy with his wife. I don't mean, I hope you know what I'm talking about. Some of you, your mind is already, uh -uh. to the pure, all things are pure. Hallelujah. Number three, financial issues. Sorry, my dear. Are you tired? Financial issues. Very important. Why there are fights on faithfulness, marriage, financial issues. Poverty is a very bad thing. I hope you know. Lack is a very bad thing. Finance, lack of finance has led to the breaking of many good homes. Hallelujah. Let me rush. Number four, spiritual factors. Spiritual factors. We are going to be dealing with this very extensively tonight. Spiritual factors. You married a very nice, loving, virtuous, wonderful lady. Now the lady has changed. You don't even know who you married again. Or the man has changed. The man didn't used to drink. He didn't used to smoke. He was a brother. He was even an escort in your fellowship. That's what made you like him. Now he has changed. 
He has a special fridge. Cronenberg. Star. Name them. They pay him salary. He comes at 300,000 or 200,000. He comes back with 5,000. His friends have helped him finish it. Comes to vomit around. And you are saying, it wasn't like this. There are many families that have these unanswered questions. And the recommendation they gave them is go for counseling. Let me tell you something. This is not an issue of counseling. Are you hearing me? There are forces of darkness militating against families and if you do not stand to take your position in Christ and conquer these things, you will be surprised. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Spiritual factors. You just got married and you found out that this man suddenly developed epilepsy. He wasn't epileptic. There was no problem. Stress that you cannot, you cannot imagine. You give birth to children. This child has this problem. This child has this problem. This child has this problem. It's not normal. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. The third area I want to talk about very quickly is the issue of barrenness. The reason for barrenness and unfruitfulness in marriage. In Mark 11 verse 12 to 14, when Jesus saw a barren tree, he cursed it. That means God cannot be the author of barrenness. Say amen. Are you listening to me? The command he gave man, Genesis 1 28, he said, Be fruitful, multiply. For a long time, the issue of barrenness disturbed me because I've had the opportunity to pray for many people that have suffered from barrenness. And so it was a personal, it was a personal pain in my heart. And I wanted to find out why. Hallelujah. Now the general reason for barrenness is health challenges. You know, all kind, all the whole medical things. Fibroids, no womb, stories, stories and all of that. I won't go into that. But I want to give you something very shocking. Hmm. I'm already sensing the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 98%, listen. 98% of barrenness issues in marriage is a resultant effect of satanic activities. Either in the life of the individuals or tied to their family. Please listen to me carefully. Please can you hear me? This is very serious. I want to have your attention now. 98%. Sometimes people see ladies or people that are barren and just say, ah, maybe this lady was promiscuous. No, stop judging people. I know healthy people, brothers, sisters, people who loved God, kept themselves. Now the man gets married and they start telling him all kinds of reports from the hospital. Oh, you cannot give birth. Now the lady gets married. Suddenly they tell her, there is a growth in your stomach. Where did it come from? What did I do? Listen, please. Please give me strings. Hallelujah. Strings. 98% of barrenness in marriage. Please listen. Because someone may be a savior. Some of you, it's time for you to set your loved ones free. This is why God is bringing this word. People have been asking questions. Why do we have this sister barren? Ah, we knew this sister, this brother barren. Can I tell you something? It is purely demonic. Purely demonic. I once spoke to a lady years ago. I wish there's a way I can see that lady again. Ah, knowledge. Years ago, this lady came to me and she told me she was crying. And she said, Sir, if I tell you what is wrong with me, you will not believe it. She talked to me. She said, I don't have a womb. It's not like I lost it. No fallopian tube, no nothing. I'm as empty as a man. Nobody knows it. She's not told anybody because some of you won't keep quiet. Hallelujah. And this lady was talking to me. Listen, you know, and then 
Those times I was saying, Abba, don't worry. Um, you know, God will do something. God will do all of that. And the lady looked at me. And she said, will I marry? I said, Abba, you marry. Do you know the question the lady asked me? She said, can you marry somebody like me? Aha. That was when the thing dawned on me that this lady was not playing games with me here. You know, sometimes you see people come for counseling. You don't know what is eating them up. I looked at this lady. I said, Lord, do you know after I left this lady, I had to go and cry to God. I said, Lord, give me the power for creative miracles or let this kind of people never come to me again. They should rather go to a man of God who can solve their problem. This is too bad. This lady left my place crying. Now you will see this lady and think she was promiscuous, isn't it? Because we are very judgmental in the body of Christ. Once you see anything, you just carry your mouth and start saying things. Uh-uh. The Bible says judge not. There's nothing. They, they said she was supposed to be a man or something, something, blah, blah, blah. And then you know all those doctors, medical, we have a doctor here. He gave a testimony. You know all those things they taught you people. Hallelujah. There are issues like that. A man gets married to his wife. One year, no child. Two years, no child. Three years, no child. What is wrong? There are even to make matters worse. There are times that they go to the hospital, the man is fine. Have you seen people like that? Fine. Nothing is wrong. The woman is fine. Three weeks ago, I was, three weeks now, yes, I was counseling and a woman came to me. Very interesting case. This woman was pregnant. Maybe you would say it's about six, seven, but they would go to the scanning machine. Huh? Ladies. And then they'll find out that there's nothing. It's not like there's fibroid or mm -mm, nothing. Yeah. So when you hear me talk like this, some of you just sit down saying, I beg this. No, let me tell you. God has granted us. You can ask the ministers. They will tell you. Counseling opens your eyes to things you will not imagine. Hallelujah. One day after Koinonia, a lady walked up. No, I saw her. And I knew that something was wrong with her. And I called her. I said, what is wrong with you? And she laughed. She didn't want to tell me. And I asked her. I said, what is it? She said, there's something. It's like it looks like a worm, but a little bigger than the worm in her private part. It's a living thing. No, I'm, I'm being very honest with some of you so that you wake up tonight. We are not playing games here. We are going to pray. Ah, how do you explain this now? And the lady was looking. Immediately I looked at her. I saw the spirit. For this purpose was the son of God made manifest. There are some of you, listen, I want to teach you something tonight. 98%. Delay in marriage for some of you is a curse around your family. Pronouncements and projections. Listen, your salvation affects you, not your territory. Are you listening to me? Let me teach you something here. Your salvation does not change your territory. Otherwise, there will not be terrorists in Nigeria. Your salvation does not change your territory. It takes an understanding of God's word and the operation of the anointing to put the devil where he belongs and release yourself from shackles of darkness. There are many people here. There are all kinds of yokes on your life. Please listen to me. There are many of you here. You sleep in the night. Men come to you to have sex in your dreams. They use the face of your father, mother, the face of another woman, the face of animals. You've just been laughing. That, that's, that's, that's a question mark happening there. The church does not deal with these things. We shy away. Many of you here, I tell you, because we come from an African continent. Our children will not need to go through this. But there will be a generation that must pay the price. And it so happens that we are the ones in between. Don't let anybody fool you. America is over 200 years. Some people pay the price and pass the heritage of godliness. My children will not need to go through this. 
Are you listening to me? But someone has got to go through this. And it so happens that you are the one. So let me announce to you, for some of you who have been trivializing things, you've been confessing God's word. People come, some of, listen, I, I want to deal with some things this night. This is pre-miracle service. There are many of you that have been oppressed. You get up, you are bedwetting. You cannot explain it to anybody. You are not bad. People cannot understand. You need help, but the church will not arise. We will keep giving all kinds of flimsy explanations. Some of you have an unusual urge for sex. You cannot, you love God, but you can't see a man or woman. This is not normal. These are operations of spirits. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? There are many of you. There's been, there's been constant happenings around your family. Everybody that marries, there is a divorce. It, it kept happening. It kept happening. Are you ready to break that cycle or you just want to watch and be saying, oh, don't worry. It won't happen to me. You will be surprised. Because it's already happening to some of you right now. This is why God gives gifts to the body. Hallelujah. Let me teach you something about spirits. Look at me. Some of you do not know that there are territorial spirits. Listen, please. That are, are willfully given access over territories. I pray for people for deliverance almost every day. And the demons shout and what they always say is, we have legal access in this body. In the book of Jude, the Bible says, when Archangel Michael came to take the body of Moses, what happened? Satan was there claiming the body too. Satan is still claiming the bodies of people. When a demon leaves a man, the Bible says, it will go through arid regions. Hear me? Seeking for a place of refuge. He said, not finding any. He will say, let me arise and go to my house. He has gone, but he's still calling the man his house. Hallelujah. I was born again. I was a preacher and demons were still oppressing me. Are you listening to me? I confess the word. I read the books you have read. Let me tell you something. I was moving terribly in the anointing but demons would press me in the night. I would sleep in the night and see them come. My shouting the name of Jesus was as helpless as something was wrong. This is what has been happening to some of you. You have a dream. They are pressing you. They are oppressing you. You can't even shout Jesus. You are about to write a serious paper. The devil just comes. Somebody just sleeps between the dream. That's the end of it. Nothing works again. Don't let anybody deceive you. We will not lie to you in this place. The Bible says, Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Tonight, whatever has held your destiny will bow this is the re see you this is what many people like mfm and the rest call spirit husband and spirit wife i know many people are, ah, there's nothing like that just shut your mouth oh shut your mouth quickly because you see let me tell you something brothers and sisters the bible says the things that appear in this realm that the things that are material were made from the things that are immaterial there are there are tribes that covenanted people to people are you hearing what I'm saying? He said right from when you were in your mother's womb. I knew you. I called you. That means spiritual things can happen right from your mother's womb. It's in your Bible. He said while you were in your mother's womb. I called you already to be a prophet. Hallelujah. And there are many innocent believers. Not getting married getting barren, giving birth to all kinds of satanic things. Do you know why Satan is frustrating you? Because you or your parents have made a decision to serve the Lord. Do you know, I was telling someone, I cannot remember, with the crude traditional African ways of giving birth, sir, we didn't have difficulty in giving birth. When a woman is giving birth, they will bring fire and they will even use knives or something to cut the placenta. Yet women were giving birth freely. Do you know why? Because their allegiance was unto Satan. Some of our parents got up and said, look, this is over. And the devil says, you have declared war. This is the mark. And some of you sit down and just laugh. You like a cool, smooth, nice message that just tells you everything is alright. Yes, 
potentially but you need to get up and make it so it says we have seen everything under his feet he said but we do not yet see i'm, I'm sorry he said he was raised made a little lower than the angels crowned with glory and honor he said but we do not see all things under his feet that means all things have not yet come experientially hallelujah there are the bible says blotting out every handwriting what is what was paul seeing when he was saying this what did paul see where did they write the handwritings there are all kinds of diabolic ordinances against people some of you this is what is responsible for your marital predicament no man comes around you or only married people only married people don't say the, there is nothing no by now you know that mistakes don't happen in the realm of the spirit a lot told me to preach this and set people free this night are you listening to me delay delay nothing works a man will come into your life you will do the introduction later he will get up and become a strange man to you don't you see what is happening in the realm of the spirit many of you are not reading the handwritings on the wall counseling is not the solution the devil needs to experience the power of the kingdom this is what will put him to flight he said how all inspiring are your ways through the greatness of thy power not through noise not through counseling will thy enemies submit themselves there are ladies, any man that comes into your life, these spirits will frustrate the guy and bastardize his life. You are a good person. There are ladies, anytime you enter a relationship with them, the guy must die. It has happened and they are just giving useless explanations. Beautiful lady, virtuous, submissive, no guy will ever see you listen some of you once a guy sees you all he wants is to sleep with you no responsible man can see you only touts and armed robbers and drug barons they are the ones who can see you something is wrong is someone hearing me tonight we are going to pray if you came here this is how we are rounding up this series hallelujah some of you would have been married since, but because of this wickedness, the devil laying claims over your marital life and destiny. Every night, some of us cannot sleep. Snakes everywhere, to the point that some of you even see them physically. I've counseled people. One time, a lady came inside, we were counseling. Immediately, the lady came inside. She just came in. What? The next thing I saw a snake. Maybe like twice this. Just by her side. I said, my dear, what is this that I'm seeing? And she said, sir, this is why I came. What is this thing? Some of you come from royal families. Ordinances have been made against you. Let me tell you, if you do not rise up in the name of the Lord, be ready. There is trouble. The day you gave your life to Christ, you declared war. The devil marks the line and it takes authority to put him where he belongs. Joe, you were with me in Mina. Please stand up. He was with me when I went for the crusade in Mina. What was the rampant case there? Blindness, deafness. The women, once they give birth, they become deaf and dumb. Ask him, he was there. The first day of the crusade, God moved and mighty things happened. The second day of the crusade, after the crowd, they created a special session for the sick people. If you're a man of God, you will tell us today. They line from one end, a large crowd to the other end. Ask him. There were over maybe 60 or so people. Those days, when we didn't have this understanding, we'll come and be struggling, trying to heal the sick. Ah, uh ah, -uh, now we know better. I knew that this is about a territory. This is about a territory. I settled it in my secret place. More than 40 of the people. I was lifting them from their wheelchairs. Stand up. See, once the strong man, no man will enter into a man's house and spoil the goods without binding the strong man. I give you spiritual knowledge. Many of you, God will set you on fire. You need to go back home and say, Aha, now I know the answer. This is it. This is it. 
no guesswork again. This is it. Hallelujah. I barely came to the people. Just one touch. Ear open. Eyes open. The mute were speaking. Now this before it would be a spectacular miracle for me. But now I know better. There are many of you. You, are, you think dating.com or whatever is the solution. Let me tell you tonight. You are going to humble yourself. There are many of you. In the, you see all kinds of things. Some of you are Christians, but there are demonic, diabolic ordinances. I once prayed for a lady who told me that voices, she hears voices. They tell her the things to do. She was walking one time, and this thing ladies like putting on their waist, it was on the ground, and the voice said, carry it and put. No man, except you are on fire. See, brothers, let me tell you, if you are not on fire, I don't know how to help you. You will fall like a leaf. There are many ladies that come for counseling. As soon as they enter, I see the spirit of seduction. And I know that if not because I've, I've declared my stand unto God, you will be surprised. Because they tell me how many pastors, even in this area, that they sleep around with. Men and women who stand on your pulpits and speak nonsense. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm angry in my spirit because some destinies will be opened. Some of your parents, in a bid to help you when you were sick or something, ran to the village. Is that true? Please answer me. Is that true? You were getting admission and they ran. They came and said, okay, please, we want her to pass this. They did it out of innocence because that's all they knew. But let me tell you something. The devil never gives you anything free. Make no mistakes about it. You will collect the goods now and pay for it later on. Okay. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? This is the problem with many of you. Your kingdom reigns. His kingdom reigns. Above all. Above all. Lord, your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. Above all. Above every cultural kingdom. Above every ordinance of darkness, your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns above all. Above all, yeah, Lord, your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns above all. Let me tell you something about the operation of these wicked spirits of darkness. They will not only wreck your marital life, your academics will be shattered, your personal self worth shattered, sicknesses you cannot account for. This is what many of you are suffering. Please hear me tonight. Don't trivialize what you are listening to. This could be the key. That will help you maritally. This could be the key. I tell you when you dethrone Satan. You will be shocked. The way doors will start opening for you. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray. Enough is enough. You can't be living like this. Except God has not called us. Except God has not sent us. Part of our mandate is to set the captives free. I'm not a pastor. Our mandate is to set the captives free. There are many of you that you, you, are, you are trusting God for marriage this year. But the way things are going, except God intervenes, it will not work. It will not work. Hallelujah. There are some of you, you are a row of ladies in your house. Nobody has married. A row of people, four, five ladies. Nobody has married. One brother just comes. Two days is not serious. Let me tell you. If this is my wife. And Bishop Stan wants to come and collect her. If I'm a responsible man. You think I'll just allow him. 
what will you do? You will fight unto death. They laid cold over the body of Moses. There are many barrenness issues. Some of your loved ones, they are busy insulting your sister, calling her a witch. And see, listen, I must balance this before we pray. Listen. This is where you need to be careful with prophets. Because this lady, look at me please. Let me teach you something. Listen. This sister here can be affected by a lot of demonic things. from her. She may not even know. As a prophet, I can stand and I can see a demon behind this lady. It does not mean she's a witch. This is demonic oppression. Are you hearing me? I may pray for her. You see people who came for koinonia here. Roll on the floor. They are not witches. Many prophets have caused trouble in the body of Christ. They keep blaming people. A woman comes. Now you come and pray for her. A woman came to me. She came to complain about her husband. They were actually a woman brought them. Two of them. They were quarreling. The woman was this and that and that and that. And then the husband now started calling the woman a witch that a prophet told him his wife is a witch he should, he should leave her alone as i was talking to her i now saw the spirit and the woman started manifesting the man said you see you see what i'm saying confirmation immediately i, I finished the spirit in him jumped up and wanted to run out he scattered the things there scattered my table when he finished i said who now is a witch among two of you Are you listening to me? Very important. You may not know the things you are dabbling into. And if spiritual knowledge is not given unto you, you will not, the Bible says, through wise counsel, make war. Some of you will be settling things. This is pre-miracle service. I tell you, don't miss next week's miracle service. What God will do in this place will surprise you. If you are coming here and you are not blessed, we are fake. Are you listening to me? If nothing is changing, that means... That means maybe we went to one shrine for something to pour on our head. But I tell you, there is a living God in this place. Are you ready? We are going to pray. Go back, sweetheart. One prayer point and I'll begin ministering. Listen. You are going to pray this night. Tonight is not a night of shame. Tonight is the night when you will end some things. Some of you have struggled with pornography master you can't help it. This is demonic. You don't conquer demonic things by willpower. Brothers, it takes the anointing. It takes the anointing. There are many of you, you can't keep one relationship. You love a lady, two days later, you don't love her again. You think something is wrong. You go to another lady, two days later, you can't love her again. You, you are married, but you can't see another woman move. Come on, this is demonic. The Bible says, he that conceals his sin shall not prosper. We are going to rise tonight. Everybody rise up. I tell you the devil the devil is in trouble whatever allowed you to come here tonight is in trouble hallelujah now we are going to pray just for three or four minutes you are going to pray and say lord whatever stronghold in my life whatever i don't care where it's coming from lord this night you are going to visit me some of you know what i'm talking about the snakes in your dreams the men that come to oppress you, these satanic kings, outside, inside, make sure you are praying. Enough is enough. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness. Satan, you are in trouble tonight. Satan, you are in trouble. The strong man against families tying their marital destinies your time is up tonight pray like a priest pray like a priest pray for your family members pray for your loved ones
pray for the buried people in your family that barrenness you have come to your end tonight light shines in the darkness one more minute come on pray shake it take it take it enough is enough as soon as zion travels Hallelujah. 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 Oh, it will end. It will end. Please be in the mode of prayer. We are serious in this place. If your neighbor is distracting you, tell him, don't distract me. Don't distract me. Don't distract me. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Listen. I'm going to pray for people right now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me people. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for people. Oh, there will be mass, mass, listen, mass emancipation. Some of you who did not know that what is happening to you is demonic, you'll be surprised. Don't forget about your neighbor. Hallelujah. This spirit that comes to oppress you, hear me? Whether carrying the face of your brother, your mother, another woman, I don't care. Telling you they are married to you, listen to me. I tell you, I see fire in this place. Hallelujah. And I'm going to pray. Whether you fall down or not is, is not the issue. Right now. Believe and expect. There is a lady in that row. I see a spirit manifesting. It's a snake. Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. We are going to shout the name Jesus once. My God, my God. Hallelujah. I tell you, I want you to shout it with faith. There is noise that will hit the gates of darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now hear me. Hear me. There are many of you. Snakes. Snakes. The Bible says, I have given you authority. Luke 10, 19. Over snakes. There is a reason why the Bible calls snakes and scorpions lift your hands i'm going to pray the power of god will move in a mighty way anyone here that has been initiated into any demonic thing whether you know it or you do not know it right now lord jesus let the power of god move be it in dreams move i set you free right now right now Right now, right now, right now, be free, be free, be free. Come out of her, out, come out, come out, come out, come out of her. The children shall not suffer the iniquity, every occult initiation every initiation through sex through dreams that will close the, the doors of your marital life I challenge it I challenge it hallelujah let her go come out of her come out right now Come out. Come out. This is a snake. Come out. Come out right now. Out of her. Come out. Go. Go right now. Listen. You are being delivered though. Don't wait till you fall. Something is happening. The presence of God is in this place. 
Alléluia. 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 Ladies, say after me, I'm wonderfully and fearfully made. My body. Look at me. Look at me. Come. Come. Liver, liver. Shall the captives be delivered? Let this girl go now. Let this girl go now. The fire of the Holy Ghost is against you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listen. Do you know for some of you, this is what spilled over into your academics. Many of you may not know. This is why no matter what you do, things don't happen. Don't miss miracle service. Sister, come. This is what you have suffered. Come, you. The lady put in her hand. Come out. Come, it's time for God to help you. No, you, you. The lady with pink, come. Please hurry up. We're out, we're out of time. There's fire burning all over this building. That devil... Look at me, sister. You have suffered. Your academics is not very good. This is a spirit. You are not lazy. Look at me. Look at me. Hallelujah. I set you free. It will cough out something now. That devil of darkness. In the name of Jesus. Let this girl go free. In the name of Jesus. Now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. See. Now in the next two to three minutes. You are going to pray for your family members. That as you are praying. Don't keep quiet. Some of you. Your sisters have suffered. If you can invite them here. For miracle service, invite them. If you cannot pray, lift your voice. Say, Satan, enough in my family. Enough. Pray. Pray. Satan, I stand representing my family. Get lost. Get lost. Get lost. I set altars of darkness on fire. Get lost. Outside are you praying? Outside are you praying? Outside are you praying? My family comes under divine protection. My family, pray for your sister, pray for your brothers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what is happening in many of our homes. This is why daddy is fighting with mommy. Hallelujah. Right now in the next two minutes, I want you to cause, listen, any seed of barrenness, whether in your life, ladies, I want you to pray this. If you need to lay hands on your womb, lay hands on your stomach, do it. Pray for your sisters at home. Pray. I am fruitful. Pray. I am fruitful. No devil. No devil. Please take this prayer seriously. Take this prayer seriously. The Bible says, be fruitful. I am fruitful. I am fruitful. No barrenness. No barrenness. No barrenness. 
Let his pray. No fibroids. No demonic clothes. No fibroids. Thy spray. Every devil of impotency is cursed. Pray for your family members. Barrenness. Hear the word of the Lord. Barrenness. I don't care how long. I don't care how long. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye. The power of God is still moving. The power of God is still moving. Let her go. Come out. Come out now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I want to pray for you. We're out of time. Lift your hands, everybody. If it doesn't apply to you what I'm saying, you can connect for your parents or your family members. Any lady here or any woman with any demonic growth called fibroid or any kind of cyst, listen, in the name that is above all names, I curse it right now. I curse it right now. I cut that growth away from your body. I flush it out of your body. I flush it out of your body. Any satanic medical condition, whether your fallopian tube is blocked, you don't have womb, even if you lived a promiscuous life before and you lost a womb, I create a new one right now. When God forgives sins, he forgives the consequences. Hallelujah. I pray whatever has held your marital destiny that the man that is destined for you cannot come or you cannot get married right now. Kapota kataba lataba rakataba be released be released be released I release you enter your marital destiny enter your marital destiny I command it enter your marital destiny enter your marital destiny hallelujah whoever has been tied here in any wrong ordinance whether it was unknowing some of you enter relationships you go and cut yourself cut the guy drink your blood you call it love this is nonsense but i want to pray for you now the bible says the blood of jesus speaketh better things than the blood of abel satan hear my voice over the lives of these people i command right now take your hands away Take your hands away. Take your hands away. Lift up your heads, all you gates. Be ye lifted. Ancient doors. Ancient doors. Every altar of darkness. My Bible says, whatever has not been planted by God will be uprooted. I uproot, I tear down, I set on fire. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of lust. Every spirit of lust. Please lift your hands. I'm praying for everybody. Every spirit of lust that keeps taking you back into immorality. Whether you want it or not. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I set you free. I set you free. I set you free. Receive it. Receive freedom against lust.
Hallelujah. Anyone here under the curse of habit, lesbianism, homosexuality, look, you must not be just lift your hands. I'm praying for you. Don't say I'm not. Uh -uh. Whether homosexuality, listen, lesbianism, all kinds of things. There are people that sleep with animals and do. I'm speaking for the sake of the many who will be hearing, not necessarily just you. There are some of you ladies, you have affection for one another. Guys, affection. You think it's normal. This is satanic. Right now in the name of Jesus. I deliver you from this curse. In the name of Jesus. Be free. Be free. Be free. Hallelujah. Finally, I pray for you. Whatever you have lost because of the times of ignorance some of you have suffered heartbreaks some of you have suffered a lot of things i pray there is a god that can restore the years canker worms have eaten lift your hands i want to pray this is finally father in the name of jesus i pray that for many people between now and miracle service give them a big miracle between now and miracle service you will testify on friday upon this altar you will testify i release breakthrough breakthrough that will bring restoration you will testify i open doors of favor doors of grace doors of academics i challenge darkness you will sleep like a baby no more fibroid no more growths no more pains no more aches you are free all the spirits that come to torment you you will see them no more you will sleep like a baby forever hallelujah hallelujah you have not given your heart to the lord jesus christ you are in this place listen to me this is the most important thing if you have not given your heart please let them not go sister don't go yet you've not given your heart to the lord you are already in danger hallelujah what an opportunity as we prepare for our great miracle service next week you're here you've never given your heart to the lord or you've given your heart to the lord and you found yourself derailing honestly you've entered ways that are not of god and you want to make it right right now please we, we are limited we just have a minute or two for you inside and outside as the lord speaks to you you've seen what the lord is doing in this place hallelujah the bible says come unto me all ye that are heavy laden and i will give you rest leave your seat and come out right now i want to agree with you i want to pray with you appreciate them as they come there are people who have never given their lives to christ or this is their first decision please don't sit back don't wait for somebody else inside and outside quickly keep clapping thank you for coming thank you sister Thank you, sister. God bless you. There are people outside. Don't sit back there. Come and stand here quickly. Keep appreciating them. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The Lord is bringing you to change you. I see you, my brother. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Thank you, sir. Appreciate them, Koinonia. It's your sacrifice to bring them to the kingdom. God bless you. Bring all of them here. Hallelujah. Thank you, my brother and my sister, for coming. This will be the beginning. Keep coming if you still want to come. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, say it from your heart. Lord Jesus, I love you. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. I declare that I'm born again. I'm a child of God. The grace of God is at work in my life. From today, I receive the Holy Spirit and God's life into my heart. I'm a new person in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.